After many years away from home, the Empress's parents returned only to find that the cabbage they had nurtured for 20 years had been uprooted by a pig. Even more absurdly, they were unaware that the pig was actually their sworn brother. Soon, the flying boat landed on the mountaintop. Everyone looked down at the bustling city below. Shwarian was astonished. It's truly the Great Flame Dynasty. But how is it in the Holy Demon Domain? Shwefugue asked. Are you saying that the territory of the Great Flame Dynasty, which should be in the southern wilderness realm, appeared in the Holy Demon Domain? Esteemed Purple Emperor was also baffled. Let's go. We should enter the city and check it out. Several of them walked on the main street, observing the passing crowd. It seems this place is not just an outpost, but also a trading post. At that moment, esteemed Purple Emperor suddenly stopped a carriage. Young man, my family, and I have just arrived here. We wish to go to the Great Flame Dynasty. May we accompany you on the way? This way we can look out for each other. Saying this, he took out a pouch of money. The young man immediately accepted it and agreed with a smile. On the way, everyone observed the unfamiliar infrastructure. Esteemed Purple Emperor commented. This road is interesting, very convenient. It seems that the array inscribed in this official road enhances the six-hooved creatures pulling it. The young man proudly replied, you have keen eyes. This official road was commissioned by Minister Zhong. All of our great flame dynasty's roads are like this now. With such roads, our lives have become much better. Even if traveling on foot, the arrays here can alleviate fatigue, helping people to move more effortlessly. Esteemed purple emperor, catching on to the information, inquired, you mentioned Minister Zhong? Could the prime minister you speak of be named Zhong Yangming? The young man gave esteemed Purple Emperor a glance. You know the name of Minister Zhong? Well, after all, he is the Prime Minister of our Great Flame Dynasty. It's really him, esteemed Purple Emperor remarked with some nostalgia. Then, Shuarian from inside the carriage spoke up. Judging by your demeanor, you seem to be living well. You must have a good Empress. Indeed, our Great Flame Empress Z is deeply respected and revered by all of us. Seeing the young man bowing distantly towards the palace, both esteemed Purple Emperor and Shuarian were reassured. It seems the Empress of the Great Flame Dynasty is still Ziroyan, and she's safe. Shuefugue and Lu Guixiang were also thrilled, their mouths agape in excitement. We'll soon see our beloved granddaughter. Shuerian then asked the young man again. You all seem to hold her in high regard, don't you? The young man's face flushed with emotion. Of course, our empress works diligently and conscientiously. She has made our great flame dynasty prosper. Who wouldn't admire her? However, one cannot ignore the achievements of the prince behind the empress, the best prince in our world. Prince, the four of them were momentarily taken aback. What do you mean? Shuefugue, being more experienced and worldly, quickly regained his composure and asked the young man, it seems like you all greatly admire this prince. Without a second thought, the young man responded, naturally, without the prince, how could we have lived such good lives? If not for him, the empress would have likely faced dire consequences, and we might have died. The great flame dynasty would have disappeared long ago. Where would there be the united reign of the current empress? In these prosperous times we enjoy now, hearing this, both esteemed purple emperor and Shuarian were startled. Z Ruoyan nearly faced disaster. Esteemed purple emperor immediately inquired. What do you mean our empress almost died? What happened? The young man's eyes brightened. You've asked the right person. I was there when it happened. Back then, the Astral Pavilion and Eastern Flame Kingdom joined forces against us. Empress Z stood alone against two foes, fighting against those body cultivators. Just when Empress Z was about to be struck down, Empress Luo intervened, fighting side by side with Z Ruoyan, thinking of his daughter's valiant efforts in battle. Esteemed purple emperor felt a pang of pain in his heart. It was fortunate that he had been sincere and kind to his subjects, or they might have abandoned Z Ruoyan in her crucial moment. Seeing him distressed, Shuarian quickly approached to comfort him. While all this remained unsaid, the young man continued, At that time, we were all scared and desperate, yet also furious. As we were preparing to fight to the death, the prince arrived. You might not understand the sentiment at that moment. The situation seemed hopeless. Everyone believed they wouldn't survive. The empress was fighting with a do-or-die attitude. But then, in that crucial moment, the prince transformed into a blazing fire from the distant horizon. Coming before us, with his own strength, he would stood everything, protected the empress, defended the great flame dynasty, and saved all of us. The young man paused and let out a sigh. In that battle, the prince used a secret technique. He sacrificed himself to save us all. I wonder how the prince's health is now. Shuarian stared blankly at the esteemed purple emperor. Such risks shouldn't have occurred in the first place. Why didn't the measures left behind by Elder Luo or the shadow guards come into play? Thankfully, everything is in the past now. She then turned her gaze back to the young man. I wonder what other achievements the prince has done that would be worth our admiration. Of course, there are many. The young man exclaimed with enthusiasm, apart from the road 
infrastructure. There's the livestock on Great Flame Mountain, Great Flame Wine, and other products. All these initiatives were led by the prince to boost the development of Great Flame. He also set up various welfare institutions, and the list of his benevolent actions goes on. Once we enter the city, you'll see for yourselves. Oh, and speaking of the prince, there was an amusing incident during that battle at the Imperial City. The four of them leaned in with interest, do tell. With a grin on his face, the young man continued. When the prince first made his appearance, he seemed to be hiding his identity and was wearing a ghost mask. How could the people not recognize him? When they all started shouting out his identity, the prince looked quite bashful. Hearing this, all four were taken aback. The esteemed purple emperor felt as if he was numb. A ghost mask? Are you kidding me? It has to be a coincidence. He shook his head in disbelief, trying to push away the unrealistic thoughts. Then he asked the young man, do you know the title or full name of this prince? Without hesitation, the young man pulled out a wooden carving. Of course, he is known as our supreme benevolent sugar baby deity Xiao Tian. Prince Xiao, Sir Xiao. The four of them were momentarily speechless, trying to process the peculiar title. Supreme benevolent, sugar baby, deity? What kind of name is that? Suddenly, Shue Fugue, upon hearing the term sugar baby, turned to look squarely at the esteemed purple emperor. The esteemed purple emperor looked immediately displeased. Father-in-law, why are you looking at me like that? Although I was frequently protected by Shue Ruyin when I was first at the Shue residence, I am still the founding emperor of our nation. Shue Ruyin, feeling slightly embarrassed, questioned the young man. That title doesn't sound quite right, does it? The young man, with evident pride, responded, Supreme Benevolent represents the prince's benevolence. Deity symbolizes his great power. As for Sugar Baby, it represents the prince's spirit and is also the motto of our Sugar Baby Association. Externally gentle, but internally tough. Persevering, promoting acts of kindness, and striving for world peace. Consider this. Being a kept man, or living off a woman, is seen by many as a disgraceful act, a reflection of incompetence. But our prince is different. He redefines the concept. He has personally shown us that your social status doesn't determine your worth. Society's opinions and judgments don't determine anything either. Only you can define yourself. The young man's passionate words left the group silent and at a loss for words. The esteemed purple emperor even began to question his life choices. Why was I mocked for being taken care of by the Shui family? While Xiao Tian is revered and respected by the people, even when seemingly in a similar position, can one really elevate such a status with noble spirit? Is it all about inherent talent? Shui Ruyin tried to console him. It's alright. The Xiao Tian he's talking about may not be the same one we met at the mysterious wealth mountain range. Let's inquire more before jumping to conclusions. Just remember how you kept praising Xiao brother back then, saying how great he was and how he saved you. If it turns out to be the same person, referring to him like that would be so awkward. Just then, the group finally reached the southern border gateway. Meanwhile, within the palace, Xiao Yu were rushed into the imperial study to inform Zi Ruoyan, mother, there's news. The names of grandfather and grandmother have appeared at the border check. What? Zi Ruoyan's body stiffened, her face a mask of disbelief. Seeing this, Xiao Yu were spread her hands out, saying, mother, look. The next moment, Xiao Yu were reverted to her original form, and on her belly were clearly written the names of several individuals. Zi Ruoyan was taken aback. Esteemed purple emperor and Shua Ruyin are the names of my parents. Shue Fugui and Lu Gui Xiang are names mother once mentioned. They are the names of my grandparents. It seems unlikely that this is just a coincidence of shared names. Xiao Yu er had a smug expression, right? You only mentioned it once, and I remembered it immediately. Zi Ruoyan gently patted Xiao Yu er's head, praising, Xiao Yu er is truly remarkable. But Xiao Yu er could clearly see that Zi Ruoyan's expression was not one of excitement, deep longing, and concern. Seeing the worry on Zi Ruoyan's face, Xiao Yu er quickly comforted her. Mother, don't worry. Zi Ruoyan took a deep breath. We can't conclude anything based solely on names. We need to see them in person and confirm their identities. With the current situation, we can't be sure that someone didn't get wind of this and is impersonating my parents. Xiao Yu er, do you have any safe methods to ensure their identity? Xiao Yu er raised an eyebrow, her face brimming with confidence. That's easy, mother. You can release the authentic bloodline aura of the human emperor. When you come into contact with grandfather, if he releases the same bloodline aura, then it is surely him. After pondering for a moment, Zi Ruoyan replied, That's a good idea. Do you know where they are now? Xiao Yu er confidently said, They've just entered the southern gateway and haven't left yet. Zi Ruoyan smiled excitedly, Good, let's go and meet them. Meanwhile, as the esteemed purple emperor and his companions entered the city gates, they looked around the transformed surroundings and couldn't help but reflect. Back when I was emperor, the south was quite desolate. In just a few years, a new city has flourished like this. It's impressive. Suddenly, Shue Fugue pointed to a nearby structure and asked the young man, What is the purpose of that building? The young man smiled. That place is called a residential community. It's another innovation by Prince Xiao Tian. Moreover, the materials used there have been specially refined. Esteemed purple emperor looked puzzled. Given that, are there enough resources to sustain it? The Great Flame Dynasty won't be financially strained, will it? The young man beamed with pride. Of course not. Both the treasury 
countries of the Great Flame Dynasty and the Primordial Demon Kingdom are under Prince Xiao Tian's supervision. The prince himself has a knack for generating wealth, and both treasuries often receive his generous support. Everyone says that Prince Xiao Tian is truly the Empress's valuable partner. And see those buildings on either side? That's where our Living Off Others Association holds its events. They were personally overseen by the prince during their construction. The four of them looked at the nameplates on the buildings, momentarily speechless. They read, Southern Ever Blossoming Joyful Welfare Home, World's Best Supreme Benevolent Sugar Baby Deities Institute of Light, Southern Gateway Branch. The young man continued excitedly, the one on the left provides shelter for orphans and the elderly, while the one on the right educates the children. The group became even more dumbfounded. While the intentions were commendable, couldn't they have chosen better names? Just then, a shout caught their attention. Mother, over there! As they looked up, they saw Zi Royan suddenly yell, Imperial Aura Suppression. A steamed purple emperor gazed at his radiant daughter. Is that Zi Royan? But before he could speak, Zi Royan felt something amiss. This man's imperial aura is so feeble. Could he be an imposter? With that thought, Zi Royan's anger surged. How dare you deceive me? You've got some nerve. Saying this, she released an even more intense pressure. Under the immense force, a steamed purple emperor knelt on one knee, coughing continuously. Inwardly, he thought, my daughter has grown so powerful. Unfortunately, I can't release my realm's aura. If I did and it affected even a single hair on her head, Shwarin would ensure I'd go bald right then and there. Luckily, Xiao Yu were suddenly interjected. Mother, if you continue like this, grandfather will be forced to the ground. Zi Ruoyan paused, turning sharply to Xiao Yuer. What did you say? Xiao Yuer. Xiao Yuer hurriedly explained. Mother, that's grandfather. The bloodline aura on him is genuine. Zi Ruoyan was dumbfounded, but he seemed so weak. It's because you've been with father. Your bloodline has been strengthened a lot over time. Not just you. The aura from my second maternal grandfather would probably also be suppressed by my second mother. Xiao Yuer explained. Zi Ruoyan was flabbergasted and quickly withdrew her oppressive aura. Moments later, the group returned to the palace. The esteemed purple emperor sighed with relief, finally home. He teased Zi Ruoyan. Dear daughter, why are you so silent now? You were quite majestic earlier. What happened? Why not release your bloodline aura again? It was so powerful that your old man almost knelt before you. Feeling embarrassed, Zi Ruoyan didn't know how to respond. Suddenly, Shui Ruoyan slapped the esteemed purple emperor's shoulder. Why are you scolding her? Zi Ruoyan didn't do it on purpose. It's your fault for not being strong enough to withstand your daughter's aura, and you have the audacity to be angry. Scratching his head sheepishly, the esteemed purple emperor tried to defend himself. It wasn't like that, Shuaruyan. I was just trying to lighten the mood because Zi Ruoyan seemed embarrassed. Shuaruyan wasn't in the mood to listen to his explanations. She shot him a sharp glance, and the esteemed purple emperor immediately wilted, mumbling an apology. Seeing this, Shuaruyan's face softened, full of motherly love, as she opened her arms to Zi Ruoyan. Zi Ruoyan. Overwhelmed with emotion, Zi Ruoyan ran into her arms. Mother. The two embraced tightly. You must have faced many hardships over the years, but mother is back now. Everything is okay. I've always known you to be strong-willed. If you want to cry, let it out. Vent your feelings. If anyone bullied you in the past, tell mother, and we'll teach them a lesson. Zi Ruoyan, feeling a wave of happiness, closed her eyes. No, mother. Gently stroking her daughter's hair, Shuarian remarked, I never imagined you'd grow up so fast. You've done an outstanding job as empress, far better than your father. The esteemed purple emperor felt numb. Why does it always have to relate back to me? Suddenly, Zi Ruoyan's expression changed. Following her gaze, Shuarian noticed two women approaching slowly. Zi Ruoyan, suppressing her feelings, asked, How long have you been here? However, Luo Feng Yuan and Bai Qing looked like they were trying to hold back their laughter. Luo Feng Yuan even mimicked Zi Ruoyan by leaning into Bai Qing's chest and saying, Mother, seeing their mocking gestures, Zi Ruoyan was infuriated. Luo Feng Yuan continued to provoke, Your reunion with Uncle Zi and Aunt Shui was truly a sight to see. I've already instructed Xiao Yuer to record it all with a formation. Once Xiao brother returns, before she could finish, Zi Ruoyan roared and lunged at her. However, Luo Feng Yuan dodged with a teasing smile, looking back at Zi Ruoyan with a mischievous grin. And just like that, the human empress Zi Ruoyan and the demon empress Luo Feng Yuan were at it again. Bai Qing turned to the esteemed purple emperor and the others, offering some snacks with excitement. Want some? The esteemed purple emperor and the rest were stunned, quickly refusing. Bai Qing shrugged, taking out a piece for herself. She munched and said, Don't worry about them, they spar frequently. Oh, and she's Uncle Luo's daughter, Luo Feng Yuan, the current holy demon empress of the primordial demon kingdom. The esteemed purple emperor inquired, isn't brother Luo in the holy demon domain? Bai Qing replied, still chewing her snack, Uncle Luo is on the battlefield, he's likely been captured, and is in mortal danger, we're preparing to rescue him. With Uncle Z back, our chances of succeeding are higher. Shui Rian patted Bai Qing on the shoulder, child, tell us what happened, okay? Bai Qing nodded in agreement. Meanwhile, in the endless void, Xiao Tian finally reached his destination. He pointed to the realm world ahead and asked Hua Kai Tu, is this your hometown? Just as Hua Kai Tu was about to nod, Xiao Tian abruptly 
abruptly grabbed his and Wang Chiodao's hands, gearing up to rush straight in. Suddenly, Xiao Tian halted in his tracks, causing bewilderment among the others. What's going on? Why did we stop? Xiao Tian turned to Hua Kai Tu. Has the heart of the world of your hundred flower domain formed? Hua Kai Tu shook his head in confusion. No, Long Chiodao elaborated. Forming the heart of the world isn't easy. It requires secret methods to gather the rules of a world, and the execution of such methods is extremely challenging. Our clan leader once tried to form the heart of the world, but found the difficulty too overwhelming and gave up. Xiao Tian smiled mysteriously. This will be interesting then. The heart of the world of your hundred flower domain has already been formed. Suddenly, the system puppy alerted Xiao Tian. Respected master, the hundred flower domain's heart of the world has successfully formed. Moreover, the world barrier is covered in formations. If we rush in directly, we might alert them. Furthermore, this domain world in front of us seems to be under erosion. In 15 days, the hundred flower domain will decline to a lower domain world. Upon hearing this, a surge of fury overtook Xiao Tian. Why does it feel like the entire universe is conspiring against me? The hundred flower domain was to be merged into the holy demon domain. And yet, someone is trying to steal it. Is there no law and order left? Sensing Xiao Tian's agitation, Long Chiodao quickly asked, Lord Xiao, what's wrong? Gritting his teeth, Xiao Tian growled, someone is trying to steal what's rightfully mine. Without hesitation, he once again dragged the other two, heading straight for the world barrier, thinking, even if they detect our intrusion, what of it? Shameless thieves, dare to face me head on. However, as soon as they entered the barrier, they were blinded by an intense luminosity. Damn, it's so bright. Is your homeland always this dazzling? Hua Kai Tu looked around, equally puzzled. My lord, the hundred flower domain wasn't like this before. Xiao Tian became even more perplexed. Can this world change its color on its own? No, this place used to just look like a regular forest, and everyone lived near Flower God City. Hua Kai Tu explained. Xiao Tian interrupted him. Let's leave the details for later. First, take us to where you used to live. Also, stop calling me my lord from now on. Hua Kai Tu looked at Xiao Tian in surprise. How should I address you then? After a brief pause, Xiao Tian said, Just call me King of Hell Deity. Long Chiodao, on the other hand, was speechless. He thought, How much does Lord Xiao fear being called Supreme Benevolent Sugar Baby Deity? Elsewhere, in the core region of the Hundred Flower Domain, the Flower God City was currently entangled and bound by countless vines. The Flower Head Clan's leader, Hua Xia, was also restrained by these vines, kneeling on the ground, feeling utterly humiliated. These vines were continuously infusing them with power. Unable to bear it any longer, Hua Xia demanded answers from the hooded figure before him. Why are you slaughtering our people and forcefully pumping this power into us? What are you trying to achieve? With a slight raise of his hand, Di Xinlu signaled a vine which immediately slapped Hua Xia across the face. Following this, Di Xinlu clenched his hand, and vines instantly muzzled Hua Xia. Internally fuming but helpless, Hua Xia seethed at the situation. Not only had Di Xinlu effortlessly formed the heart of the world of the Hundred Flower Domain, even the Flower Divine Ancient Tree was obedient to him. How detestable. Just then, there was a sudden disturbance from the heart of the world. Di Xinlu quickly realized, someone has forcibly penetrated the barrier of this mid-tier world. Someone with such ability must be at least of the 20th tier. Could it be a reinforcement called upon by the escaped flower head tribe? Speaking this, Di Xinlu snapped his fingers and ordered, send someone to investigate. Immediately, a long-haired individual dressed in a black robe appeared, kneeling and calling out, Master. Di Xinlu began examining a world map. It's likely around the peaceful landing area of the hundred flower domain. Investigate for any suspicious beings, be it the flower head tribe or outsiders. If you find any suspicious entities, eliminate them immediately. The subordinate confidently displayed their weapon. I will ensure they meet their end silently and painlessly. Di Xin Lu, not doubting her capabilities at all, smiled maliciously. Then let me thank you in advance on behalf of the intruder for your kindness. At this moment, in the core region of the hundred flower domains flower god city, a towering ancient tree stood majestically at the center. Xiao Tian, accompanied by Long Chiodao and Hua Kai Tu, slowly approached the base of the tree. Taking in the refreshing scent of the flower god tree, Xiao Tian remarked, This tree smells quite pleasant. If it was turned into skewers to grill meat from the Great Flame Farm, I wonder if it would taste better. Suddenly, several guards appeared behind the trio. Peaceful Landing City's guard force is here. Who are you? Stay away from our flower god's offspring tree, one of them demanded. Surprised, Xiao Tian turned around and noticed the serious expressions on their faces. It seems even the city guards are in a constant state of alert. The situation in the entire hundred flower domain isn't looking optimistic. Recognizing the urgency, Hua Kai Tu quickly removed his mask. Recognizing him, the guards looked shocked. Young lord, weren't you out of the hundred flower domain? Why have you returned? Waving his hand, Hua Kai Tu replied, it's a long story, but I've returned on important business. These two gentlemen are esteemed guests I've invited to save our hundred flower domain. This is Supreme Benevolent King of Hell Deity, Lord Xiao Tian, and beside him is one of the members of the Heavy Holy Dragon Cavalry, Mr. Long Chiodao of Dragon Mound. Immediately, the guards kneeled in respect. Greetings, esteemed guests. 
Xiao Tian motioned for them to rise, then pointed at the flower god's offspring tree. Can this flower god's offspring tree be turned into skewers for grilling? Or perhaps I can take the whole thing with me? Hearing this, even Hua Kai Tu was taken aback. Lord Xiao, choose your words carefully. This flower god's offspring tree is grown from a branch of our revered flower head tribe's divine ancient tree. To turn it into a skewer would be a grave insult, and could invoke the wrath of the flower divine ancient tree. Xiao Tian looked puzzled. What do you mean by reverence and punishment? It's just a piece of wood. Why make such a fuss? And by its name alone, it sounds like it's made for perfect grilling skewers. The guards were utterly flabbergasted. Ever since the turmoil in the Hundred Flower Domain, the Flower Divine Ancient Tree had seemingly withdrawn its protection over the Flower Head Tribe. There were even incidents where the Flower God's offspring tree destroyed its own cities. As expected, the offspring tree began to shake violently. Their minds went blank in horror. This is it. Peaceful Landing City will be destroyed by the Flower God's offspring tree. Looking up at the ancient tree that appeared on the verge of a violent outburst, Xiao Tian commented, Impressive. Can this tree attack people too? Seeing the swift tree branches approaching him, Xiao Tian rolled up his sleeves. Come on then, let's see what you've got. Hua Kai Tu exclaimed in fear, Lord Xiao, be careful. But the next moment, everyone was dumbfounded. What the hell is going on? They watched as the branches kept shaking, and wooden sticks the size of skewers kept falling down. The tree even considerately tied them up with its leaves, and presented them respectfully to Xiao Tian. Unable to contain himself, Xiao Tian praised, Marvelous. It would be a pity to cut down such a tree. Hua Kai Tu, still recovering from the shock, remarked, Thank goodness. I had already known about Lord Zhao's power, so this is still within my expectations. He turned his gaze to the three guards, who were so stunned that they couldn't speak. Is this the flower god's offspring tree I know? Where's its pride? This has to be fake. Seizing the moment when everyone was still in disbelief, Xiao Tian signaled Long Chiu Dao with his eyes, implying that it was his turn to step in. Understanding the cue, Long Chiu Dao cleared his throat and addressed the people of the Flower Head Tribe, our supreme benevolent king of hell deity, Lord Xiao Tian, firmly believes that hardships will eventually pass. He will definitely help the Hundred Flower Domain overcome its challenges. The reason why your flower god's offspring tree is so close to Lord Xiao is because it also knows this. Whispering to the ancient tree, he added, if you don't want to get chopped down, cooperate. The next moment, the huge flower god's offspring tree standing in the city began to tremble. Its crown rustled and continuously shed bright green tender leaves which, under the influence of spiritual energy, became dazzlingly colorful. The onlooking crowd was astounded. So powerful. Who exactly is this supreme benevolent king of hell deity, Xiao Tian, that he can make the flower god's offspring tree submit to him? I heard he was invited by the young lord. Does this mean our hundred flower domain is saved? Look, the flower god's offspring tree is shaking so much to please Lord Xiao that it's going bald. Long Chiu Dao, observing the hope growing among the people, continued, Lord Xiao came here perhaps to use the flower head tribe to purify the spiritual energy of the holy demon domain. But for the entire hundred flower domain, Lord Zhao's act of coming to their rescue is the ray of light they've seen in their darkest despair. At this point, Hua Kai Tu told the two, My father is in the city lord's mansion, Lord Xiao. Let me lead you there first. Xiao Tian nodded slightly, lead the way. Moments later, at the city lord's mansion, Hua Kai Tu pushed open the door. Upon seeing the scene inside, his face turned pale from shock. Both Xiao Tian and Wang Chiu Dao wore expressions of surprise. Hua Jingxin was bound by a vine, which was continuously drawing power from him. Witnessing his father's weakened state, Hua Kai Tu cried out in alarm and rushed forward, but hesitated, fearing that any rash actions might hurt his father. Hua Jingxin looked up, surprise evident on his face. Why are you back? Hua Kai Tu gritted his teeth. What's going on? Can't the vine be removed? It can't be pulled out. Child, this is the root of the flower divine ancient tree. How can it be moved? Hearing this, tears welled up in Hua Keda's eyes. Father, I've been unfilial. I shouldn't have left the hundred flower domain. Hua Jingxin became instantly furious. Nonsense. Leaving the hundred flower domain was your filial duty. You all are young and in your prime, and by leaving, you can help our clan grow and expand. Suddenly, Xiao Tian's voice interrupted. Sorry to interrupt. As Xiao Tian placed his hand on the vine, Hua Jingxin froze, wondering what he was about to do. In the next moment, with a gentle tug, Xiao Tian severed the vine. The broken vine quickly retracted, but Xiao Tian grabbed it and said, did something wrong and now trying to run? Think it's that easy? As he exerted more force, the vine shattered and transformed into a pure, luminous green glow. Hua Jingxin looked at his hand in astonishment, and his previously weakened appearance began to rejuvenate. The vines on the ground retreated and vanished as if terrified. Xiao Tian dusted his hands and said to Hua Kai Tu, there, now the father-son reunion is complete. You two can have a proper conversation. Hua Jingxin was utterly perplexed. The flower god's offspring tree's vine was dealt with just like that. Where did my son find such a powerful individual? Seeing his father still in shock, Hua Kai Tu quickly reminded him, Father. The call snapped Hua Jingxin back to reality, and the power within him surged, instantly dispelling the binding on him. Standing up, Hua Jingxin bowed to Xiao Tian and said, Thank you for saving my life. Xiao 
Tian waved it off. We're all on the same side. It was a small matter. Hua Jingxin was momentarily taken aback, thinking to himself, has my son already recruited such a formidable person to our side? And so quickly at that, he shook off the thought, deciding, it doesn't matter. The minor details are irrelevant. The pressing matter is to address the situation in the Hundred Flower Domain. With that in mind, he spoke again, esteemed guest, this isn't the right place for a conversation. Shall we move to the inner hall? I'll have refreshments prepared. Xiao Tian nodded in agreement. Sounds good. Hua Jingxin led the way, guiding them to the inner hall. After a short while, they were seated around a dining table. Only then did Hua Kai Tu address his father. Father, you have no idea what I went through after leaving the Hundred Flower Domain and arriving at the Mysterious Wealth Mountain Range. The guardians of the Mysterious Wealth Mountain Range were absolutely unreasonable. If it weren't for Lord Zhao's intervention, I would have been killed by their blades. Hearing this, Hua Jingxin rose to his feet and bowed. Esteemed guest, I thank you again for your timely aid. Should you ever need anything in the future, please do not hesitate to ask. After expressing his gratitude, Hua Jingxin took a drink from his cup, finishing it in one go. Xiao Tian waved it off with a smile. No need for formalities. My reason for coming was to save the Hundred Flower Domain. A hopeful expression appeared on Hua Jingxin's face. With your assistance, perhaps the Hundred Flower Domain truly stands a chance. However, the current situation seems a bit different from what Hua Kaitu previously described. Please, enlighten me on what exactly has transpired. Hua Jingxin's expression turned bitter as he began his account. Not long after we sent Hua Kai Tu and the others away, the entirety of the Hundred Flower Domain was sealed. The entire domain was shrouded in a vast array, preventing any entry or exit. This resulted in the domain being enveloped in golden light, never experiencing night. This constant illumination changed things, with the Flower Divine Ancient Tree no longer protecting us, but revolting and attacking, killing our clansmen. Everything shifted when a figure in a black robe appeared. He simply placed his hand on the ancient tree, and somehow pacified it. At first, we believed we were saved. However, to our horror, the tribal chiefs and elders were soon ensnared by the rampant vines and sealed inside the ancient temple. Those of us city lords with weaker abilities were bound by the flower god's offspring tree's vines and drained of our energy. Our people were killed by the vines. We were confined in the city lord's mansion like livestock, while the chiefs and elders remained sealed, their fates unknown. Long Chiodao, having listened to the story, was puzzled. He wondered why the mysterious figure in the black robe had acted in such a manner and where all the drained energy had been channeled. Xiao Tian, however, was wholly engrossed in the food before him. This food is absolutely delightful, though it's all vegetarian. It's even more savory than meat dishes. I should get Zhong Yangming to learn these recipes. Unbeknownst to him, both Hua Kai Tu and Hua Jingxin were looking at him with raised eyebrows, their expressions a mix of amusement and disbelief. It was up to Long Chiu Dao to gently prod him, Lord Xiao. It seems this food suits your tastes quite well. Startled, Xiao Tian cleared his throat, attempting to regain his composure. Ah, I was just pondering. How are you so certain that both the Flower Divine Ancient Tree and Flower God's Offspring Tree were under the control of the figure in the black robe? Hua Jingxin recalled the scene, when both the Flower Divine Ancient Tree and Flower God's Offspring Tree were under the control of the robed figure. They were enveloped in a layer of golden light. The patterns flowing on this golden light matched exactly with the patterns on the golden horns atop the robed figure's head. Can you visualize the culprit's appearance? Xiao Tian inquired. Certainly, Lord Xiao. Watch. Above Hua Jingxin, flowers started swirling, channeling spiritual energy, which then coalesced into a silhouette. After a quick comparison, Puppy informed Xiao Tian, Master, it's indeed the ancient god tribe. Xiao Tian couldn't help but snort disdainfully. For a tribe with such a grandiose name, their actions are petty and trivial. He then addressed Hua Jingxin seriously. Now that I understand, let's eat up. We need to be well fed to catch the culprits. Hua Jingxin bowed in agreement, as you say, esteemed guest. Elsewhere, Jing Wuxing, an assassin dispatched by the rogue figure, was lurking in the city. Being a professional killer meant hiding in the shadows, striking down enemies without a trace. Relying on information provided by the vines of the Flower Divine Ancient Tree, that so-called Supreme Benevolent King of Hell Deity, Xiao Tian, should be here. But where is this city's Flower God's Offspring Tree? Looking up, she was stunned by what she saw. Is this the Flower God's Offspring Tree? Why is it bald? Just then, passing citizens from the Flower Head Tribe were discussing among themselves. Do you think this Supreme Benevolent King of Hell Deity Xiao Tian can really solve our problems? I'm not sure, but he does seem reliable. Haven't you noticed the Flower God's Offspring Tree went bald trying to impress him? Indeed, it's such a rare sight. This is the first time we've ever seen such a thing. Upon hearing the conversation, Jing Wuxing revealed a subtle smile, thinking, it seems that fate is indeed favoring me. I never expected to get a confirmed lead this easily. Supreme Benevolent King of Hell Deity Xiao Tian, enjoy your peace before nightfall. Come nighttime, Jing Wuxing used a secret technique that rendered her invisible. The guards at the entrance couldn't detect her presence. Once inside the mansion, she gently swung both arms, extending her inherent black bone blades without making a sound. Meanwhile, the room echoed with cheerful banter as a group was raising their glasses.
glasses and a toast. Jing Wuxing slowly stepped into the room, approaching Xiao Tian from behind, raising her bone blade. To die painlessly is the greatest kindness I can grant you. Be grateful, Xiao Tian. However, just as she was about to strike, a sense of unease halted her. Everything felt too easy. From the moment she entered the city and obtained information, she was quickly led to this so-called Xiao Tian. Clearly, someone had orchestrated these events. Was it to divert her attention? To make her believe that Xiao Tian was the main target when, in fact, Long Chiodao fits the description my master provided. He's the one operating covertly, investigating without a trace, while this Xiao Tian is but a decoy to misdirect potential assassins. What a clever ruse. What brilliant misdirection. In an instant, Jing Wuxing shifted her focus towards Long Chiodao. Detecting the sudden change, Xiao Tian looked at Long Chiodao with a caring gaze, causing confusion in Long Chiodao's heart. Why is Lord Xiao looking at me with such an expression? Without explaining, Xiao Tian simply turned his head and chuckled. I've always told you, always be wary of others. Before Long Chiodao could even comprehend the meaning of those words, Jing Wuxing's bone blade swiftly moved towards him, slicing through his dragon spirit form. With a loud boom, Long Chiodao exploded, his echoing question resonating in the room. What the hell? What's going on? Watching Long Chiodao slowly dissipate, Jing Wuxing hadn't anticipated such an easy mission. She immediately initiated a teleportation spell, thinking of making a swift exit. Just as she stepped into the teleportation circle, a sudden realization struck her. What she had just killed felt insubstantial, not a creature of flesh and blood. Before she could ponder further, a large hand reached in from outside the circle, grabbing her by the shoulder and yanking her out. Caught off guard, Jing Wuxing was thrown to the ground. Xiao Tian firmly placed his foot on her chest, berating her, You dared to harm my tool person. Ahem, my trusty steward in such a gruesome manner and still think you can escape? Before Jing Wuxing could utter a word, she felt immense pressure on her chest, causing her to cough up blood. Xiao Tian glared at her, I didn't permit you to speak. Jing Wuxing trembled, realizing her situation was dire. Hua Jingshen and Hua Kai Tu also approached, asking, Master, who is she? And what about Elder Long Chiodao? Xiao Tian smiled reassuringly, Stay calm, it has nothing to do with you. The guards were no match for an assassin of the 20th tier. As for Long Chiodao, before Xiao Tian could finish, Long Chiodao had already reformed. After taking a deep breath, Long Chiodao recognized the woman on the ground. She's from the Mist Blade tribe. Xiao Tian looked puzzled. You know of her? Long Chiodao replied, Yes, my lord. The Mist Blade tribe is renowned for its assassination skills. They possess extraordinary talents and are shrouded in a black mist, allowing them to effortlessly hide in the shadows. Apart from this, they have inherent bone blades that grow stronger with their abilities. Even if damaged, these blades slowly heal. After listening, Xiao Tian pointed at Jing Wuxing and paused. I purposely didn't intervene when she tried to assassinate you, as a lesson for you. I've told you before, always be wary of others. You always console me, saying I overthink, believing not everyone in the world harbors ill intentions. Now tell me, do you know her? Do you have any grudges against her? I thought your long life would have given you insight into the treacherous nature of people. You're still so naive. Fortunately, this assassin was incompetent. What if a more skilled killer had come and raised peaceful landing city to the ground? Jing Wuxing's mental state was on the verge of breaking. Xiao Tian was the assassination target mentioned by her master, and his strength was even more formidable than she had imagined. He dares to say, I'm not a competent assassin. What kind of professional assassin could unleash their full power and destroy an entire city with a single airborne strike? That's not an assassin. That's a berserker. At that moment, Xiao Tian's voice resounded. See that? Tears of regret. Long Chiodao, noticing the tear at the corner of Jing Wuxing's eye, scratched his head in confusion. Master Xiao, what does she regret? She regrets her lack of skill. She's ashamed of tarnishing the reputation of the assassins. However, there's an old saying that a prodigal who returns is more precious than gold. Since she seems remorseful, I'll give her a chance. He extended his hand towards Jing Wuxing. But Jing Wuxing shouted defiantly, to hell with that. I wasn't aiming for Long Chiodao. You were my real target. I simply mistook him for you. I am the top-ranked young assassin of the Mist Blade tribe. You foolish. Before she could finish her sentence, there was a sharp sound, and blood splattered everywhere. Jing Wuxing's life was extinguished. Xiao Tian calmly dusted off his hands. Even on the brink of death, she tries to deceive and spread lies. I gave her an opportunity, and she wasted it. Keeping her alive would have been a mistake. However, it was too late. With her dying breath, Jing Wuxing had loudly declared her target, the echoes of her voice still reverberating within the room. Cold sweat dripped down Long Chiodao's forehead. This Mist Blade tribe member really has a sharp tongue. Of all people to insult, she chose Master Xiao. Seriously, she met a swift end, but we might face repercussions. Hua Jingshen and his son pretended they hadn't heard a thing. After a prolonged silence, Xiao Tian suddenly turned with a smile. This individual was cunning. She deliberately slandered us with her dying words, hoping we'd hastily destroy the evidence. This is an attempt to divert our investigative focus. Do you think my analysis is accurate? Upon hearing Xiao Tian's words, Long Chiodao hurriedly replied with a bow. Master Xiao, your analysis is very insightful. Not only that, but her last words were clearly intended to provoke and enrage you, hoping the secrets she held would 
be forever hidden. We must not fall for her ruse. Hearing this, Hua Kai too was taken aback. Wow, is that even possible? Elder Dragon Mound, who stands by Master Zhao's side, is truly wise. His words are so profound. I can't be left behind in this. Thinking quickly, Hua Kai too added, with my limited knowledge and understanding, I would have remained clueless if not for Master Xiao exposing the plot. Hua Jingxin turned to his son, surprised. What's gotten into my son? Since when did he start speaking such nonsense? Are they even discussing the same matter? Hua Kai Tu quickly hinted to his father. Father, didn't you hear the assassin insulting Master Xiao before her death? Say something, anything, to soothe Master Zhao's emotions. Seeing this, Hua Jingxin quickly replied, I feel the same way. Thankfully, I realized it in time. It's all thanks to Master Zhao's formidable capabilities. A rank 20 powerhouse was simply crushed with ease. Observing their cooperation, Xiao Tian didn't further press the matter. He stared at the spot where Jing Wuxing's body had disappeared. After a while, Xiao Tian sighed softly. Why did she push me? What good comes from forcing me to unleash my suppressed powers? The next moment, Xiao Tian suddenly released his power. His eyes became incredibly clear. So these are the specific energy signatures of the Hundred Flower Domain? But why are there conflicts arising beneath the ground over Jing Wuxing's body? Turning to the trio, Xiao Tian decided to sort this data information into his internal system. With the system in place, why should he strain himself analyzing? Quickly, numerous pieces of information flowed into Xiao Tian's internal puppy system, receiving Hundred Flower Domain data. Please wait. After a brief moment, the system responded, information received successfully, master, all set, rubbing his temples. I'm really not good at fully opening my senses to receive external information. The influx of details is overwhelming, causing a headache. Thankfully, I have the system to help process it. Xiao Tian began to read aloud, after the members of the Mist Blade tribe die, the remaining energy from their flesh and blood has been completely absorbed by the roots of the flower divine ancient tree, and the peaceful landing city's flower god's offspring tree. Hua Jingxin was taken aback, the flower divine ancient tree, after our sacred tree was controlled, it wanted to devour flesh and blood? Xiao Tian nodded. Exactly. The extensive root system of this sacred tree spans the entirety of the hundred flower domain, constantly drawing nutrients from this world to fortify itself. If your ancestors hadn't taken branches from the so-called sacred tree when it was still young and planted them in various cities to compete against it, your tribe would have vanished long ago. Hua Jingxin felt a chill run down his spine. So, the flower divine ancient tree isn't protecting our flower god tribe, but rather exploiting us. But Master Xiao, Hua Jingxin tried to reason. From birth, members of our tribe have been blessed by the ancient tree. There have been numerous benefits. How can this be? Xiao Tian interrupted. Want to know why? He placed his hand on Hua Keita's head, abruptly pulling off the flower that grew there. Hua Kai Tu was in shock. Why is my head bleeding? Hua Jingxin panicked. Master, in our flower head tribe, removing our head flower can be fatal. Blood still oozing from his head. Hua Kai Tu stared bewildered. Master Xiao, is there something wrong with our tribe's head flowers? From the flower, Xiao Tian extracted a fruit. Eat this. Hua Jingxin stared, dumbfounded. There's a fruit inside my son's head flower. But when our tribe members died in the past, their flowers wilted without such a fruit. A moment later, realization hit Hua Jingxin, the flower divine ancient tree, the flower god's offspring tree. So, when Master Xiao mentioned exploitation and parasitism, he meant this. No wonder children blessed by the vines, who grow these head flowers, live healthy lives, while those who aren't blessed die tragically young. The so-called blessings, the flowers that sprout from the top of our heads, they're actually parasitic. Are the premature deaths of unblessed children caused by the flower divine ancient tree? All to make us believe only the blessed children can survive without harm? At that moment, Hua Kai Tu took the fruit, bowed slightly, and said, Master Xiao, thank you. Without hesitation, he swallowed the fruit whole. The next second, intense flames erupted from Hua Kai Tu, so fierce that even Hua Jingxin struggled against their force. In alarm, he quickly asked Xiao Tian, Master Xiao, what's happening? Xiao Tian remained calm. Destruction comes before renewal. Be patient. It seems that the flower divine ancient tree's blessing indeed drew from your tribe's essence. Now, that essence is returning. As his words settled, Hua Kai Tu underwent a profound transformation. His hair grew rapidly, and a fresh, unique life force emerged from within the flames. It was as if a distinctive life was being nurtured and birthed. Simultaneously, the flower god's offspring tree released a flurry of new leaves that danced in the air, enveloping Hua Kai Tu until he was encased in a cocoon. His vitality intensified, and soon after, the cocoon burst open, revealing a completely transformed Hua Kai Tu. His handsome face was now strikingly different, and his entire demeanor had changed. Moments later, Hua Kai Tu slowly opened his eyes. Hua Jingxin was left in awe. My goodness, is this strikingly handsome young man really my son? Yet, Hua Kai Tu spoke with a calm voice. Master Xiao, with the essence restored, I've gained inherited memories. However, over the past years, the flower divine ancient tree's interference led to a loss in our lineage's memories. Xiao Tian chuckled. Interesting, can you still produce flowers on your head? Hua Kai Tu waved his hand, and a flower bloomed atop his head once again. Xiao Tian quietly thought.
not impressive. His natural air purifier is still functioning. Hua Kai Tu then shared with Xiao Tian, Our tribe is the Flower God tribe. Based on the fragmented memories, it seems we originated from an ancient, powerful race. We possess the means to cultivate the Flower God tree, and have an innate ability to suppress it with our bloodline. Perhaps this is why the Flower Divine Ancient Tree secretly pilfered the essence of our tribe's bloodline. Seeing his confident demeanor, Xiao Tian muttered under his breath, I should have waited for the air purification to complete before aiding their recovery. Oh well, consider it a good deed. With that thought, he gestured for Hua Jingxin to come closer, beckoning with a finger. Come, extend your head. Soon enough, Hua Jingxin underwent a similar transformation. Observing the appearances of the two, Xiao Tian exclaimed, My goodness, is everyone from the Flower God tribe this good looking? What a pity. The old Flower Head tribe appearance was quite interesting, especially since they could purify the air. Turning to Long Chiu Dao, he asked, Have you ever heard of the Flower God tribe? Long Chiu Dao shook his head, Never. Xiao Tian continued, Do you think those resembling the ancient god tribe came to the hundred flower domain for the flower divine ancient tree or for the flower god tribe? A look of surprise crossed Long Chiu Dao's face. Master Xiao, you're not suggesting the ancient god tribe did all this to target you? It's as surprising as the sun rising from the west. However, the next moment, Xiao Tian spoke again. This ancient god tribe must be dealt with. They dared send assassins after me and tried to steal my hundred flower domain. Truly despicable. Moreover, if they strike you, they strike me. Don't worry, any resentment you hold for being attacked, I'll settle it on your behalf. There's no need to feel sad or upset. I've got this. Long Chiu Dao felt overwhelmed. All right, I spoke too soon. I apologize. My mistake. After all the twists and turns, it's still Master Zhao's persecution theory. But could we please not mention the part where I was attacked? At that moment, Hua Kai Tu chimed in, Master Xiao, what should we do next? Xiao Tian, pulling out a chair and sitting down, said, first, transform all members of the Flower Head tribe and peaceful landing city back to their rightful appearance. You can handle this task. Once I've eaten, drunk, and had a rest, I'll head to the Flower Divine Ancient Tree. Also, keep a watchful eye on the Flower God's offspring tree. Long Chiu Dao nodded, understood, Master Xiao. I'll document the changes and effects within Peaceful Landing City once the entire Flower Head Tribe is restored to the Flower God Tribe and observe the impact on the Flower God's offspring tree. Elsewhere, the sacred flower of the Flower Divine Ancient Tree was radiating a blinding light. A unique power constantly circulated around the sacred flower. Di Xin Lu's face was filled with excitement. The divine fruit is finally about to ripen. What a great start. Suddenly, the flower divine ancient tree began to rumble. Tied up nearby, the flower head tribe chief, Hua Xia, looked puzzled. The flower divine ancient tree has always been calm. It only once rebelled when it was controlled by the rogue figure. Why is it acting up now? An impatient Di Xin Lu shouted, quiet down. No sooner had he spoken than the flower divine ancient tree ceased its disturbance. It reached out a twig, gently winding around Di Xin Lu's wrist, conveying information to him. Di Xin Lu was taken aback. Jing Wuxing is dead. Hua Xia was stunned. That fearsome assassin has lost his life? Is the intruder who suddenly entered the hundred flower domain so powerful? Moments later, Di Xin Lu shook off the twig of the flower divine ancient tree, pacing back and forth anxiously. The secret of the flower divine ancient tree parasitizing the flower head tribe has been discovered. The flower head tribe has been freed from the parasitic state and restored to the flower god tribe. They plan to come and inspect tomorrow. How did this happen? They'll be here tomorrow, but the divine fruit isn't ripe yet. Consuming an immature divine fruit won't enhance my cultivation. What a waste. The formation of the divine fruit must not be disturbed. Perhaps I should make the first move and try to annihilate them. Though doing so might worsen my injuries, consuming a fully cultivated divine fruit will make everything right again. While pondering, Di Xin Lu noticed the odd expressions on the faces of Hua Xia and the others nearby. Their eyes were blank, as if in shock. Why are they looking at me like that? The next moment, a footstep sounded behind Di Xin Lu. Xiao Tian, taking a bite of the divine fruit in his hand, inquired, This fruit is quite tasty. Do you have more? Di Xin Lu was flabbergasted. What the hell is going on? Xiao Tian had somehow appeared behind him, holding a half-eaten divine fruit, chewing it with relish. Long Chiu Dao asked curiously, Master Xiao, is the fruit really that delicious? Yes, the taste is fantastic. Would you like to try? Xiao Tian offered pieces to both Long Chiu Dao and Hua Kai Tu. As they placed the fruit into their mouths, they were immediately overwhelmed by its exquisite taste, feeling as if they were floating in ecstasy. Suddenly, Xiao Tian spoke up. Why is it that after eating this, I only find it delicious and feel nothing else? It looks like something of value. Shouldn't consuming it boost one's strength or fortify the body. Long Chiu Dao, stroking his beard, speculated, it's probably not fully matured. Hence, it's only flavorful without any real effects. Xiao Tian was taken aback. Not right? If it's this tasty now, wouldn't it be absolutely mouth-watering when right? Long Chiu Dao was stunned. Master Xiao, logically, shouldn't you be more concerned about the potential benefits of the fruit when ripe, rather than its taste? At this point, a trembling Di Xin Lu chimed in. Didn't you say you'd be coming tomorrow? Why are you here? He recognized this man. But how could he be in the hundred flower domain? Why am of all people, Di Xin Lu had witnessed Xiao Tian
Yen's might in the starry skies, where with just one punch, he shattered the rules of the southern wilderness realm. Di Xin Lu had reminded himself to remember this man's face and never to provoke him. At this moment, he felt like he wanted to die. How had he managed to provoke such a significant figure? Xiao Tian responded calmly, I ate too much tonight, so I took a walk with these two. Unexpectedly, our walk brought us here. Both Long Chiodao and Hua Kai Tu were speechless. Your pace of walking is akin to flying. The scenery blurred as we arrived. Nearby, the tied-up Hua Xiao looked at Hua Kai Tu, the handsome green-haired man, thinking, why does he feel so familiar and close to me? Xiao Tian took another bite of the divine fruit and turned to Di Xin Lu. Are you from the ancient god tribe? With a rustling sound, Di Xin Lu removed his robe. I didn't expect you to recognize me. Indeed, I am from the ancient god tribe. My name is Di Xin Lu. He nodded slightly, Master Xiao. It's an honor to meet you again. However, inside, he was panicking. No, no, no. I never wanted to see you, you monster. Again, why couldn't you let me consume the divine fruit in peace, enhance my abilities, and sacrifice the entire hundred flower domain to solidify a strong foundation for our ancient god tribe's revival? Why did you have to ruin my perfect plan? Xiao Tian remained silent, continuing to eat the fruit, making smacking noises as he did so. Di Xin Lu cursed inwardly, eat if you must, but what's with the loud chewing noises? It wasn't until Xiao Tian swallowed his mouthful that he asked, have we met before? Di Xin Lu replied, indeed, I once saw you from a distance in the southern wilderness realm. With just a light punch, you caused the entire rules of the southern wilderness realm to disperse for you. It was truly memorable. Moreover, you sliced a huge section of the southern wilderness realm space away. Such power is commendable. Hua Jia was puzzled. Has Di Xin Lu changed? When did he become so eloquent? Is slicing space so impressive? Aren't many spatial storage spiritual tools created by slicing space? Why is this self-proclaimed member of the ancient god tribe making such a fuss? Di Xin Lu quickly donned his robe again, secretly hoping that his flattery would make Xiao Tian self-satisfied, buying him more time. Then, using the vines of the flower divine ancient tree, he planned to crush the heart of the world, causing the entire hundred flower domain to shatter, leading to their deaths. Grinning internally, he wondered if he should shower Xiao Tian with more compliments. However, as Di Xin Lu was laughing to himself, Xiao Tian suddenly appeared in front of him. What are you laughing about? Di Xin Lu was startled. Nothing, Master Xiao. I'm just genuinely pleased to see you. Xiao Tian's expression turned serious. Am I your father? Di Xin Lu clenched his fists in anger. That's too much. This is an insult. I am of the ancient god tribe, a noble and ancient race of gods. Do you have to humiliate me like this? Yet he had to swallow his pride. Master Xiao is joking. Our races are different, so how can? Xiao Tian interrupted him. Since I'm not your father, why are you pleased to see me? You're hiding something. Di Xin Lu thought quickly. How can this guy not be swayed? Even after hearing praise from a member of the esteemed ancient god tribe, he remains cautious and suspicious. Will my plans with the flower divine ancient tree be thwarted by such a ridiculous question? Fine. If he wants me to acknowledge him as father, so be it. Let's do this. With that thought, Di Xin Lu fell to his knees with a thud. In fact, from the moment I first saw your magnificence in the southern wilderness realm, I swore to serve under you. As he spoke, Di Xin Lu started to kowtow repeatedly to express my sincerity. I have already acknowledged you as my adoptive father in my heart, treating you with the same respect as my biological father. If you don't mind, may I address you as father? After finishing his speech, Di Xin Lu felt overwhelmed with emotion, feeling that he could abandon his dignity for the greater good of the ancient god tribe. Long Chiu Dao, standing nearby, was dumbfounded. This guy is definitely ruthless. When Jiao Benfu acknowledged his god grandfather, it was only after Master Xiao reminded him, but this one didn't even need a reminder and acknowledged it directly. So decisive, I admire. Hua Kai Tu bit back his laughter. Is this spineless guy the main culprit behind the potential downfall of our hundred flower domain? He has absolutely no shame. How did he ever control the flower divine ancient tree on his own? He seems so incompetent. Just then, Xiao Tian suddenly said, No, I refuse. Di Xin Lu was taken aback. Why? Do you realize what you're doing? You're refusing an ancient god tribe member who wants to acknowledge you as his father. But Xiao Tian calmly explained, Because you don't look like a good person. Di Xin Lu was dumbfounded. What? Xiao Tian continued with a serious expression. It's not my fault. If you want to blame someone, blame your parents for not giving you a kind face. At that moment, a vine gently touched Di Xin Lu's shoulder. His heart leapt with joy. It's time. He stood up abruptly, waving his hand dismissively. Never mind. You can have your parents give birth to you again with a kinder face. Thanks for giving me enough time to control the flower divine ancient tree and crush the heart of the world. Once the heart of the world shatters, the hundred flower domain will turn into a desolate world and all of you will be torn apart by the world's power contained within the heart of the world. Ha ha ha. He then turned around, intending to leave. However, after taking only a few steps, he was yanked back by Xiao Tian. Di Xin Lu was agitated. Have you lost your mind? Why aren't you saving the wastes of the hundred flower domain? Why did you pull me back? Do you intend for us to die together? Don't tell me you believe that using the divine weapon you used to slice through space can sever the heart of the world? Fool, that will only hasten the explosion of the heart of the world. Before he could finish his words, Di Xin Lu saw Xiao Tian
Qian grasped the heart of the world of the Hundred Flower Domain, holding and kneading it in his palm. Long Chiu Dao, standing nearby, was stunned. Moments later, Xiao Tian, holding the now subdued heart of the world, turned to Di Xin Lu. What were you saying just now? Di Xin Lu felt a chill run down his spine, realizing that he may have misunderstood and messed up some things. It wasn't the power of the slicing knife that made the rules of heaven and earth yield to him, but rather his inherent strength that scared the very rules of nature. Swallowing nervously, Di Xin Lu admitted to himself, I've really messed up this time. Resigned to his fate, he lay on the ground, giving up any attempt to resist. Xiao Tian, speaking to Long Chiu Dao, remarked, Who would have thought I could play around with this thing? Long Chiu Dao looked at him puzzled, Master Xiao, when you were needing it just now, wasn't it to compress the heart of the world and stabilize it? No, I just held it in my hand. If it were to explode, it'd do so in my hand, and you all would be safe, right? Xiao Tian suddenly realized that since the heart of the world of the Hundred Flower Domain currently had no master, he could take this opportunity to form a pact with it. Long Chiu Dao, watching Xiao Tian's actions, had eyes wide in amazement. Only you, Master Xiao, could manage to directly withstand the explosion of the heart of the world with just your hand. Di Xin Lu was completely flabbergasted. What kind of creature is this human? Xiao Tian, is his body really so formidable that it can directly withstand the explosion of the heart of the world? Just then, a white light illuminated the area. Xiao Tian pulled out another heart of the world. Curious, Long Chiu Dao approached him. Master Xiao, what are you doing? Xiao Tian looked down. I want to try an experiment. To their horror, Xiao Tian forcefully placed the two hearts of the world together, rubbing them vigorously with his hands. As the two hearts touched, a terrifying force of the world erupted from within. Those nearby could clearly feel the cataclysmic power emanating from Xiao Tian's palms. Soon, the two hearts of the world merged together under Xiao Tian's force. Moreover, Xiao Tian began to delicately shape it, using his fingernails as tools. In a short time, the heart of the world transformed into a cute little figure. In his mind, Xiao Tian silently asked, Puppy, do you like it? Puppy's soft voice immediately responded, Thank you, master. I love it. If you like it, keep it, Xiao Tian said. The little figure vanished from his hand. Almost instantly, the skies and earth of the hundred flower domain trembled. The concentration of spiritual energy began to skyrocket, and in a short time, the domain ascended to a higher realm, becoming a superior domain world. Then, regaining his senses, Xiao Tian crouched down, looking at the serene face Di Xin Lu on the ground. Accompanied by the sound of shattering, the life force within Di Xin Lu ceased. Countless breaths and energy began to seep into the flower divine ancient tree. Who would have thought? Di Xin Lu gasped, that the energy I once received from the flower divine ancient tree would be reabsorbed by it upon my death. You are indeed very powerful, even described as a defiance of heaven. Blood began to flow from the corners of his mouth as he stared intently at Xiao Tian. Although I can't resist someone of your caliber now, a great calamity is coming. Despite your immense strength, I fear you won't survive. From the side, Long Chiu Dao inquired, are you referring to the martial spirit army that keeps attacking on the meteor flame battlefield? Martial spirit army? Di Xin Lu suddenly burst into laughter. Ignorant child, the martial spirit army is nothing but cannon fodder, mere pawns sent to their deaths as scouts. To call them a great calamity is utterly ludicrous. With that, the life drained from Di Xin Lu's eyes, and he lay motionless. Long Chiu Dao looked at Di Xin Lu's lifeless body. Master Xiao, what should we do? After contemplating for a moment, Xiao Tian turned to Long Chiu Dao and made a hand gesture. It's not a big issue, he assured. Xiao Tian then reached out, gently caressed Di Xin Lu's face, and infused him with vitality. Di Xin Lu smiled blissfully. Whose hand is this? It feels so warm, like my father's touch. Xiao Tian felt a chill run down his spine and quickly withdrew his hand. Why did you stop? Before he could answer, Di Xin Lu, still in a daze, felt a familiar gust of wind coming from a slap. Where is this slap coming from? I thought I was dead. The next moment, a crisp slap echoed, and Di Xin Lu was jolted awake. Xiao Tian informed the now seated Di Xin Lu, someone taught me this technique. If someone pretends to be asleep, a slap will wake them up. Seems quite effective. From the side, Long Chiu Dao glared coldly at him. Do you want to die? You think we'd let you off so easily? Xiao Tian then turned and clenched his fist towards the flower divine ancient tree. Return is life force. You can't just consume everything. It'll harm you in the end. The flower divine ancient tree trembled and obediently returned the stolen life force. Feeling the returning vitality, Di Xin Lu was dumbfounded. Oh my god, it's coming back. I don't want it. Take it away. Can I even die on my own terms? This is so unfair. He covered his swollen face, looking at Xiao Tian. Why? Why didn't you let me die? Why did you have the flower divine ancient tree save me? Xiao Tian patted his shoulder, taking your own life out of guilt isn't a good habit. While you might find peace, what about the people of Hundred Flower Domain whom you've harmed? What about them? Saying this, Xiao Tian suddenly gripped Di Xin Lu's wrist and snatched away his storage ring. Di Xin Lu looked at Xiao Tian with confusion. Didn't you save me for intelligence and secrets? Why are you taking my possessions? Xiao Tian replied calmly. Consider these items as fines. I presume you have no objections. Turning to Long Chiu Dao, he asked, What about the clothes he's wearing? Long Chiu Dao quickly responded, The materials used are of high quality and quite valuable. 
available. If we unravel them and re-sew, they could be repurposed into many valuable items. Wouldn't it be nice to use such materials for the curtains in the cabins of the modified Void battleship? Soon, a thoroughly stripped Di Xinlu felt humiliated. Inside, he was raging. Why don't you hit me? Attack me. Torture me. Xiao Tian shook his head. I can't do that. Why not? Because I'm a good person. Hearing this, Di Xinlu's patience reached its limit. He tightly gripped his own throat. Even if the laws of the universe won't let me die, I'll strangle myself. With a determined twist, he broke his own neck and collapsed to the ground. Xiao Tian, without any hint of panic, turned to the flower divine ancient tree. The tree was sweating profusely, thinking, why make me save him again? I'm using my original power to save lives here. After transferring its power, Xiao Tian delivered a strong slap to Di Xinlu's face, waking him up. However, Di Xinlu didn't want to open his eyes. Internally, he was screaming, why? Just let me die, please. Xiao Tian patted his shoulder. Don't be like this. It breaks my heart. You've made a mess of the hundred flower domain and just want to end it all? Isn't that a bit excessive? Look, the flower divine ancient tree had to use its original power to save you. So, I've decided to have Long Chiu Dao put you under a slave contract. This way, not only can we uncover all your secrets, but you also won't be constantly trying to kill yourself. Isn't that great? Upon hearing this and sensing the energy emanating from Long Chiu Dao, Di Xinlu sat up abruptly and questioned, What exactly do you want? Xiao Tian took Di Xinlu's hand and said, I don't really want to do much. I run a farm over here and I want to plant the flower divine ancient tree there to upgrade the living conditions for my livestock. You can simply tend to the tree there. It's not tiring. Just fertilize it and take good care of it. This way, you can atone for your sins, and I can provide a better environment for my animals. It's a win-win. Why not? Hearing this, Di Xinlu felt chills down his spine. I am from the noble ancient god tribe and you want me to handle dung and fertilize? Impossible. Absolutely impossible. The next moment, Long Chiu Dao's voice resonated. Seal it. With that, Long Chiu Dao attempted to place the slave contract on Di Xinlu's head. However, he quickly realized he couldn't establish the contract. As it turned out, the rank of the ancient god tribe was higher than the sacred dragon clan, so Long Chiu Dao couldn't subdue and enslave him. Turning to Xiao Tian, Long Chiu Dao inquired, Master Xiao, what should we do? Xiao Tian pondered for a moment and pointed to the slave contract in his hand. Can I hold this? Long Chiu Dao nodded, quickly performed a series of hand gestures, and transferred the contract to Xiao Tian's hand. Di Xinlu, observing their actions, defiantly shook his head. It's useless. Our racial hierarchy is innate. Unless you possess immense virtue that can influence the world's rules. Before he could finish, Xiao Tian swiftly slapped him, sending Di Xinlu spiraling. The contract was successfully established. Holding his face in disbelief, Di Xinlu questioned, how can this be? Aren't humans always considered to be of a lower rank? Even if they were of a higher rank, they couldn't possibly enslave me. The ancient god tribe is a superior existence. Ignoring the dismayed Di Xinlu, Xiao Tian told Long Chiu Dao, see, it worked. You just weren't forceful enough. Next time, put more effort into it, okay? Long Chiu Dao remained silent, thinking, is this something that can be solved just by using more force? Yet once again, Xiao Tian had reshaped someone's worldview. Indeed, Di Xinlu, looking like a wronged wife, suddenly pointed at him and shouted, you're not human, you're definitely not human. Then, Di Xinlu stood up and invoked a secret technique, exploration technique. I want to see what race you belong to and why it ranks higher than our ancient god tribe. In the next moment, an endless expanse of starry sky emerged. Di Xinlu faintly saw behind Xiao Tian, in the darkness, figures of terrifying stature. There was the winged creator dragon god, the ancestors of mankind walking the vast lands, and the Taoist lying above the heavens and earth. Moreover, there were countless other eerie and terrifying entities. Terrified, Di Xinlu broke into a cold sweat. The next second, he spat out a mouthful of blood, retreating continuously until he finally knelt on the ground. After a moment, Di Xinlu began to speak, you are actually, but before he could finish, Xiao Tian snapped his fingers. Di Xinlu immediately stood up straight. Xiao Tian pointed to a spot nearby and scolded, stop making noise. While the adults are talking, children should dance on the side. Di Xinlu, seemingly not in control of his own body, stood aside and began to dance, internally screaming, this is humiliation, absolute humiliation. Sensing his discomfort, Xiao Tian snapped his fingers again, instructing, dance with a smile. Immediately, Di Xinlu began dancing with a mischievous grin on his face. Only then did Xiao Tian turn his attention to Hua Xia. The crisis of the Hundred Flower Domain has been completely resolved. You all needn't worry any longer. Thank you, noble sir, for saving our tribe and the Hundred Flower Domain. We have no way to repay your immense kindness, Hua Xia expressed, as the entire Flower Head tribe bowed in gratitude, shouting in unison, thank you, noble sir. At this moment, Hua Kai Tu, who stood beside Xiao Tian, suddenly spoke, Chief, Sir Zhao's kindness to our tribe is not as simple as you think. Hua Jia looked puzzled, brother, it seems we're not of the same tribe. Hua Kai Tu quickly stepped forward, Chief, I am Hua Kai Tu, you've met me before, you're the son of Hua Jingxin from the Luaning division, the one skilled in business? Yes, that's me. Upon hearing this, everyone looked baffled and confused. How did you change so much? This transformation is dry.
drastic. Hua Kaitu turned to Xiao Tian and gave a respectful bow. All of this was made possible thanks to Sir Zhao's discovery of our tribe's predicament. The flower divine ancient tree trembled, realizing that its secret of parasitically attaching itself to the flower god tribe would soon be exposed. Soon after hearing Hua Kaita's explanation, everyone was in shock. How could such a thing happen? They wondered. Xiao Tian just smiled and waved his hand. Now that you know the truth, stretch out your heads. Moments later, everyone was horrified to see blood spraying from their heads. Long Chiodao couldn't help but ask, Sir Xiao, if I'm not mistaken, wouldn't it have been easier to have the flower divine ancient tree do the job? Xiao Tian shook his head. It's more fun and relieving for me to do it myself. Long Chiodao was rendered speechless, thinking, it's just like you, Sir Xiao. Your way of thinking is certainly unique. Meanwhile, the members of the flower head tribe experienced a renewal, looking at themselves in amazement. After a while, they calmed down and deeply bowed to Xiao Tian. Sir Xiao, you've done so much for our tribe. From now on, both the flower god tribe and the entire hundred flower domain will serve you and follow your lead. Xiao Tian quickly stepped forward. All right, all right. From now on, we're all on the same side. Hua Jia asked, Sir Xiao, what plans do you have next? Xiao Tian smiled. Your main task now is to help everyone revert back to the flower god tribe. Then, I'll merge you with the mysterious wealth mountain range. And after that, I'll bring the holy demon domain to join. You, the flower god tribe, will be in charge of cultivating the flower god tree and stabilizing the chaotic spiritual energy produced by the mixed domains. Understand? Everyone was flabbergasted. What is Sir Xiao trying to achieve? Does he want to merge the domains until they explode? Hua Jia hesitantly asked. Sir Xiao, by merging the domains, do you mean to clear the void navigation routes, making them more connected and enabling the two domains to communicate? Xiao Tian shook his head. No, that's not it. Let me show you. He then turned to Long Chiodao. Are there any world fragments left in the holy dragon relic? Without any hesitation, Long Chiodao replied, there are a few uglier world fragments left. Which one would you like, Sir Xiao? Xiao Tian pondered for a moment. Whether it's ugly or not is irrelevant. It's just that its style doesn't quite fit. Let's go with the one from the decayed land. It's perfect for planting trees. Upon hearing this, Long Chiodao bowed slightly, understood, Sir Xiao, please, take it. As soon as his words faded, a piece of the world fragment appeared in Xiao Tian's hand. Waving the fragment, Xiao Tian informed everyone, see this? This is a world fragment I've compressed. Now, I'll demonstrate for you what it means to merge domains. He continued, first, tear a rift in your current domain. With a sweep of his hand, a rift appeared in the air, like this. While the domain hasn't fully merged, crush the world fragment and place it into the rift, allowing it to absorb and fuse on its own. As he spoke, Xiao Tian crumbled the fragment and tossed it into the rift. Thunderous sounds emanated from the rift. See, if the fusion process is slow, I can manually seal the rift. In this way, the two domains will perfectly merge. Witnessing the sudden appearance of a new continent and the contrasting sceneries on both sides, the members of the Flower Head tribe were in utter astonishment, their mouths agape. Seizing the moment, Long Chiodao flattered, Sir Xiao, it seems your skills have improved even further. Brushing the dust off his hands, Xiao Tian replied, while gathering information and observing the hundred flower domain, I learned some new techniques related to merging domains. Sometimes, one has to marvel at the importance of continuous learning and growth. Turning to face the crowd, he asked, Now, do you understand what I meant by merging them together? Stammering, Hua Jia responded, Sir Xiao, you are truly, truly amazing. At that moment, Hua Kai Tu suddenly inquired, By the way, Sir Xiao, how should our hundred flower domain approach the mysterious wealth mountain range? Should it be compressed into a tiny crystal ball as well? Xiao Tian pondered for a moment. We can give it a try. Half an hour later, a streak of light cut across the sky. Everyone was enveloped in a protective shield, watching in astonishment as the hundred flower domain above them was compressed. Once again, they were in utter shock. It really worked. Meanwhile, in the palace's main hall during the morning assembly, Zhong Li Huang knelt and reported to Zi Ruoyan, Your Majesty, the armies of the Great Flame Dynasty and the Primordial Demon Kingdom are fully assembled and ready to reinforce the Meteor Flame Battlefield. With the Empress leading the charge and the resources of the Elder Statesmen supporting us, we will surely be victorious in this expedition. Z. Royan replied with a calm expression, as I personally lead the reinforcement to the Meteor Flame Battlefield, I'm entrusting the Great Flame Dynasty to your care. Zhong Li Huang immediately responded, rest assured, your majesty, I will manage the affairs of the court diligently. Z. Royan nodded, then stood up and declared, in three days, we march to the Meteor Flame Battlefield. However, the moment Z. Royan returned to her study, an annoying voice greeted her, oh, isn't this our beloved niece, Z. Royan? Considering the current relationships, since your father and brother Xiao are now sworn brothers, shouldn't you be calling brother Xiao uncle? Luo Feng Yuan sat at the desk, legs crossed, her tone full of jest. Zi Ruoyan approached and retorted, back off. Lord Xiao was being reckless back then. Why are you joining in his nonsense? Saying this, she slapped Luo Feng Yuan's foot away. Luo Feng Yuan exclaimed in mock pain, ouch, that hurt. Zi Ruoyan sat down and replied, you had it coming. She felt a surge of irritation.
irritation. I don't understand. It was one thing for Lord Xiao and Wang Chiodao to create a ruckus in the mysterious Wealth Mountain range, but why did he become sworn brothers with my father? At that moment, Luo Feng Yuan continued to fan the flames. If they're sworn brothers, then Brother Xiao is indeed your uncle, and that makes me your auntie, dear niece. Zi Ruan, feeling irritable, picked up a report and said, Whatever. What does the relationship matter? At worst, my father will try to fight Lord Xiao in the end. I won't stop him. Besides, my father wouldn't even win against him. Right now, I need to focus on this report. Everything else can wait. Suddenly, Luo Feng Yuan remarked, I wonder how Brother Xiao is doing now. Zi Ruan replied, There's no need to worry. Lord Xiao is formidable on his own, and with the support of Elder Dragon Mound, even my father mentioned that with the help of Elder Dragon Mound, Lord Xiao has already destroyed the Jia family of the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range. Hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan burst into laughter. That's true. With Elder Dragon Mound by his side, we indeed don't need to worry about Brother Zhao's safety. However, I never imagined Elder Dragon Mound to be this powerful. Brother Xiao is fortunate to have found the Holy Dragon Relic and have such a formidable elder to serve him. Three days later, in the void above the Holy Demon Domain, a massive flying ship soared by. Zi Ruoyan stood at the bow, pointing her sword towards the meteor flame battlefield, accompanied by the unified chance of everyone, defeat the martial spirit army, save Lord esteemed Purple Emperor. The flying ship swiftly moved forward. Elsewhere, in the void above the mysterious Wealth Mountain range, Xiao Tian was calmly floating with the protective shield behind him. Members of the Flower Head tribe whispered amongst themselves, how is Lord Xiao planning to merge the Hundred Flower Domain with the mysterious Wealth Mountain range? Will it be similar to what we've seen? A direct collision and fusion? Shush, quiet down. Lord Xiao is about to begin. As they spoke, Xiao Tian casually waved his hand, and the miniaturized Hundred Flower Domain began to move, enlarging as it drifted towards the mysterious Wealth Mountain range. Suddenly, Puppy spoke to Xiao Tian, Master, for the Hundred Flower Domain to strike at this angle, it would be best to hit this point. However, you'll have to push it personally. If the two domains collide without proper guidance, they'll shatter. I understand, Xiao Tian responded. Turning to the others, he said, stay here and don't move. I'll be right back. With that, he slowly advanced, holding the hundred flower domain. Not far away, Di Xinlu nervously bit her finger, thinking, it feels like it's going to break. If they collide head on like this, they'll surely explode. Long Chiodao glared at him. Stop talking nonsense. Just then, the two domain worlds finally touched. A blinding white light illuminated the entire void. In this moment of darkness in the void, the two vast domain worlds began to merge. Hua Kai Tu, Long Chiodao, and the rest stood in the void, observing the merging process. As the fusion started, numerous turbulent void currents became violent. Their protective shields began to crack. Suddenly, Hua Kai Tu slapped Di Xinlu on the back of his head. What are you looking at? Get to work. Di Xinlu was angry but held back, glaring resentfully at Hua Kai Tu. Unintimidated, Hua Kai Tu retorted, What are you glaring at? Lord Xiao asked you to protect us. Reluctantly, Di Xinlu began to gather spiritual energy. A golden light, filled with divine intent, instantly enveloped everyone, defending against the turbulent currents. Finally, with their minds at ease, they all watched intently. Lord Xiao, be careful, don't really shatter the two domain worlds. When these two superior domain worlds merge, will they form a super superior domain existence? Fortunately, there wasn't a collision sound. Instead, the world barriers of the two continents began to slowly blend together, just like merging bubbles. Di Xinlu watched in awe, forgetting even to maintain a shield. It was a sight he would never forget in his lifetime. Suddenly, Long Chiodao suddenly slapped Di Xinlu on the back of the head. Focus on the shield. This is just basic operation for Lord Xiao. Don't overreact. Quickly, Di Xinlu strengthened the shield, but inside, he was panicking. It's a mess now. It's really messed up. When the powerful elders of our ancient god tribe tried to do something like this, they were directly killed by the world rules of the two domain worlds. I didn't expect this. It's really chaotic. At that moment, a sound like a muffled bell rang, seemingly proclaiming the birth of a super world in the void. The violent turbulence slowly calmed down, and a domain world, several times larger than before, stood silently in the void. Suddenly, Xiao Tian appeared beside them, declaring, mission accomplished, let's go inside and take a look. As soon as Xiao Tian finished speaking, without waiting for a reaction, he immediately pulled them and dove down. Upon entering, they saw that many members of the Flower Head tribe had already begun purifying spiritual energy. Xiao Tian looked pleased, good, very proactive, I'm satisfied. The Hundred Flower Domain and Mysterious Wealth Mountain Range have successfully merged. You have also begun purifying the murky spiritual energy. Next, I'll move the holy demon domain for merging. But with this, we need to rename this domain world. As Xiao Tian pondered, Long Chiodao couldn't help but ask, what should it be called? Thinking of the two empresses, Xiao Tian proposed, since the entire domain world is co-managed by empresses, let's simply call it the Empress Domain. As he finished speaking, the heavens and earth sang in harmony, golden lights and auspicious clouds surrounded them, adorable golden figures blew their horns, and many sprites danced around Xiao Tian, showering him with flowers. 
flowers, the words Empress Domain manifested above the world barrier, engraved in the sky, then slowly faded. Di Xinlu was dumbstruck, thinking, is this the illegitimate child of the heavens? Seeing that the task was complete, Xiao Tian stretched, yawned, and said, all right, you all continue working in the Empress Domain. I, along with Long Chiodao and Di Xinlu, will head to the Holy Demon Domain. He patted Hua Keda's shoulder and gave a thumbs up. Keep it up. Work till you drop, but don't drop dead. The Flower Head tribe members were pumped up. We won't let Lord Xiao down. Shortly after, Xiao Tian, Long Chiodao, and Di Xinlu departed. Once they left, Hua Xia told his tribe, even though the Hundred Flower Domain is no more, for us, a bright future is taking shape. The tribe members enthusiastically agreed. Yes, we've returned to our original state, even better than before. Elsewhere, Xiao Tian told Long Chiodao in the sky, take him to the Great Flame Mountain Farm. Let him familiarize himself with manure management and set up some formations to detect the approach of the ancient god tribe. So, if they ever try to sneak up on us, an alarm will be triggered. In his mind, Di Xinlu realized, is he just using me as bait to capture the ancient god tribe? Such cunning. Long Chiodao directly asked, Lord Xiao, are you fishing? What are you saying? I'm taking precautions, Xiao Tian retorted. Never mind, no more explanations. I'm going to see Zhong Yangming for food. Watching Xiao Tian's departing figure, Long Chiodao remarked, Lord Xiao sometimes seems so impulsive and gluttonous. He then turned to Di Xinlu coldly. Come, Lord Xiao has given his orders. Don't even think of trying anything. Bound by a slave contract, Di Xinlu had no room for resistance. Upon arriving at Great Flame Mountain, he was stunned. This mountain is actually formed from the corpse of an emperor-level holy dragon. Is this premium-grade feed being used to cultivate livestock and vegetables here? Such a waste. Only then did Long Chiodao explain, what's so strange about that? This holy dragon died protecting others. Offering it a place to rest is the best way to honor its sacrifice. Lord Xiao is indeed a very kind-hearted person. Di Xinlu couldn't help but laugh. Do you even hear what you're saying? I was stripped by Xiao Tian and now I'm only allowed to wear a cloak. Being humiliated to such an extent and you call that kind-hearted? Long Chiodao didn't respond, simply motioning for him to follow. Let's go. Soon, the two of them noticed members of the Blood Rune clan sitting around a table. Di Xinlu narrowed his eyes. Something seems off about these Martial Spirit Army's Blood Rune clan members. They don't exude the aura of any realm, yet the power within them is even more violent than that of body cultivators. They are much larger than any I've seen before, and there seems to be quite a bit of tension between the two groups. Their clothes even read reform and become a better person. At that moment, Di Xinlu noticed a piece of paper on the table. Picking it up curiously, he read, Great Flame Honor Toy Group, what is this note about? Before he could finish, a man suddenly slammed his hand on the table. Zhang Wushuang, pointing angrily at another, shouted, Zhang Zhizhi, you can't face me head on, so now you've learned to act from the shadows? Do you realize you've crossed a line? Zhang Wushuang continued accusingly, all this time, it was our second group responsible for letting the great flame pigs out on the mountain number five. Since we let them out, we should also be the ones to round them up. Why is your first group intervening? If you hadn't broken the rules, our second group would have been the winners this time. Zhang Zhizhi replied disdainfully, intervene? Don't forget, we are here to atone and reform. If your second group hadn't been so lazy, would our first group need to step in? You knew well that when the great flame pigs are let out, it's their peak excretion time. Instead of immediately sending people to work, you took shifts for meals. Does your second group even deserve the task? Remember, if it doesn't kill you, work till you drop. You're just making excuses. Zhang Wushuang shot back. You're just worried that our second group will outshine your first group. Outshine? Zhang Wushuang, have some shame. You only won twice in the evaluations. Do you think our first group is scared of yours? Whether you're scared or not, you know very well. Di Xinlu was baffled. What exactly are their evaluation criteria? A martial arts contest? Why is there a connection with pigs? Long Chiodao explained, their evaluation is based on pig farming. Additional assessments include raising cattle, sheep, chickens, ducks, fish, and planting fruits and vegetables. There are also tasks like cleaning manure and maintaining the environment. Di Xinlu was stunned. So, all their fiery passion and readiness to fight is because the other group raised pigs better than them? Does this mean I'm not really bait? Did Xiao Tian genuinely want me to come here just to shovel dung? Long Chiodao gave him a puzzled look. Why are you crying? Trembling, Di Xinlu desperately wanted to escape but couldn't. At that moment, the quarreling Zhang Zhizhi and Zhang Wushuang noticed the two of them. Zhang Wushuang hurried over. Lord Dragon Mound, why are you here? Does Lord Xiao have any new instructions for us? Zhang Zhizhi, pushing Zhang Wushuang aside and greeting with a bow and a smile, said, Lord Dragon Mound, I apologize for the earlier quarrel you had to witness. Long Chiodao waved it off. It's alright. Both of your recent performances have been commendable, and Lord Xiao has noticed. Otherwise, he wouldn't have taught you the special martial art technique, Golden Turtle Shield. Zhang Zhizhi responded passionately, It's our honor to learn the Golden Turtle Shield. This is not only a sign of Lord Zhao's acknowledgement, but also a step forward on our path of atonement. By practicing this technique, our bodies become stronger, allowing us to serve you better. Not to be outdone, Zhang Wushuang pushed Zhang Zhizhi aside. Lord Dragon Mound, whether we practice martial 
martial arts or not isn't the main point. Throughout our atonement, we've realized our mistakes deep within our hearts. Simply exerting brute strength won't bring peace to those who died in battle. Zhang Zhizhi shook his head in disagreement. What nonsense. Without giving 200% effort, do you even have the right to call it atonement? Have you forgotten what Lord Xiao said? Cleanse the soul with sweat. Zhang Wushuang, fed up, retorted sarcastically. Your so-called sweat probably just cools the hair on your body. It doesn't cleanse any soul. Zhang Zhizhi smirked slyly. Are you jealous of my thick hair because you're balding? Have you started to beat around the bush to attack others now? The two were clearly at odds with each other. Watching them confront each other, Long Chiodao stepped in. All right, all right. It's good to have competition. It means there's spirit. But let's not let it interfere with work. This, he said, pointing to Di Lu, is the new guy. Although he's powerful, reaching the pinnacle of the 20th rank, he made a mistake and is here to be punished. He will be responsible for handling the manure from now on. You two will alternate guiding him each day. Make sure he quickly becomes proficient at this task. Understood? Both Zhang Wushuang and Zhang Zhizhi replied enthusiastically. Long Chiodao patted Di Xinlu's shoulder approvingly. Work hard and reform yourself. The members of the Blood Rune clan cheered. Welcome our new partner to the Path of Atonement. We're glad to have another comrade join our mission of recognizing our mistakes and striving for righteousness. Let's applaud. Di Xinlu was utterly dumbfounded. Is this really the Blood Rune clan, known for rising through the ranks by relentless fighting and battles? Moments later, Di Xinlu was taken to a mountain where he saw piles of pig manure everywhere. Overwhelmed, he cried out, at least give me some clothes and tools for cleaning up poop. This is too much, giving me nothing at all. I've disgraced the noble ancient god tribe. I'm worthless. However, Zhang Wushuang and Zhang Zhizhi, observing from behind, mistook his reaction. Look at Di Xinlu. He's already so immersed in his task, shedding tears of regret. He seems to have high realizations. Given his quick progress, the Great Flame Mountain might soon have a third team, and he'll definitely be a strong competitor. Elsewhere, at the residence of the Prime Minister, a feast was in full swing. The officials were engaged in jovial conversation when suddenly, with a whoosh, Xiao Tian appeared at the table. I've just arrived and already I smell the food. Perfect timing, Xiao Tian commented with a grin. Zhong Yangming, sitting beside him, blinked in surprise. Prince, you're back? Yes, I am. Took care of some business and also have a little surprise for our emperor. Soon, the spiritual energy across our domain will flow effortlessly. The vast lands of great flame will be so much more enjoyable, Xiao Tian beamed. He then noticed an elderly chubby man on the side who had been smiling at him. He leaned over and whispered to Zhong Yangming. Who is this gentleman? Is he a new official? Zhong Yangming candidly replied, that's the empress's grandfather. Xiao Tian almost spat out his drink in surprise. Shue Fugui, the elderly man, patted Xiao Tian's back. Take it slow. No need to rush. Xiao Tian looked at him in astonishment, only for Shue Fugui to continue with a smile. So you're the man I've heard so much about but never met. The son-in-law I've grown fonder of the more I hear about him. My dear boy, your reputation precedes you, supreme benevolent sugar baby deity. It's quite an endearing title. A metaphorical rock seemed to drop on Xiao Tian's head. Why is it still that title? It's supreme benevolent king of hell deity. The one you mentioned sounds anything but majestic. Xiao Tian tried to keep his composure. This is my wife's grandfather, so technically, he's mine too. Can't lose my temper. He's not teasing me. He just likes this old-fashioned title. That's it. Regaining his poise, Xiao Tian raised his glass. Cheers, grandfather. Shue Fugui did the same. Supreme benevolent king of hell deity. Xiao Tian was startled. How do you know that title? He cautiously inquired. By any chance, were you at the mysterious wealth mountain range at some point? Shue Fugui nodded. Yes, little Xiao. I was in the city of mysterious wealth mountain. Panic began to set in Xiao Tian's heart. I hope he's not the one I saved back then. He doesn't look like my wife or her grandfather. Even if we became sworn brothers, I should be fine, right? Tentatively, Xiao Tian probed. You came back alone, right? Just happened to pass by the mysterious wealth mountain range? Zhong Yangming was doing his utmost to contain his laughter at the awkward situation. I can't laugh. If I do, Xiao Tian will definitely kill me. I must not laugh. Shue Fugui replied with a grin. I didn't return alone. I came back with Zi Ruoyan's grandmother, as well as her parents. We didn't just happen to pass through the mysterious wealth mountain range. Xiao Tian felt a sinking feeling in his stomach, thinking, please, let it not be what I think it is. The man I rescued and swore brotherhood with can't be related to this. Shue Fugui continued, without your help, my son-in-law, your father-in-law wouldn't have been able to escape from the heavenly palace. Distraught, Xiao Tian mumbled, I remember saving someone named Zhou Shintong from the heavenly palace. Could it be that I didn't find my father-in-law after all? I'd rather believe I got the wrong person than accept that Zhou Shintong is indeed my father-in-law. Reality, however, can be cruel. With a playful smile, Shue Fugui said, Little Xiao, don't blame esteemed purple emperor. Back then, he was concerned about your intentions, fearing you might have ulterior motives. So, he used a secret technique to change his appearance and assumed the name Zhou Shintong. As the revelation dawned on Xiao Tian, a familiar tune echoed in his head, and he cried out in despair, No, this can't be happening. His mind was a complete mess. Shue Fugui laughed softly, trying to console him. Don't take it to 
heart, my boy, your father-in-law is genuinely grateful to you. After all, you were the one who saved him. As for the misunderstandings, let bygones be bygones. Come on, don't just stand there in a daze. Eat up. You're young, and you need to nourish your body. Zhong, the prime minister, told me that you love the dishes he prepares. But Xiao Tian was barely listening. All he could think of was the realization that Zhou Shintong was the esteemed purple emperor and the fact that he had once again jovially bonded with his own father-in-law. Seeing him lost in his thoughts and even drooling a bit, Shue Fugue hurriedly called out, Little Xiao, snap out of it. Xiao Tian jolted back to reality, wondering why he thought once again. And then it struck him, he had another father-in-law. Overwhelmed, he slapped his forehead in despair. Seeing Xiao Tian's agony, Shue Fugue could barely contain his laughter. Indeed, the younger generation is fun to tease, especially when they are as formidable as this one. It's such a thrill. Behind him, Zhong Yang Ming was trying hard to hold back his laughter, constantly reminding himself not to chuckle. If he did, Xiao Tian would surely silence him for good. Breaking the awkward silence, Xiao Tian chimed in. Speaking of which, where is the empress? She must be thrilled to know her parents are back, right? Zhong Yang Ming quickly responded with a smile. Of course, the empress is overjoyed. However, she's not currently in the palace. She left with Empress Luo Feng Yuan. Mentioning Luo Feng Yuan, Zhong Yang Ming had to suppress his laughter, his face turning red. Taking a deep breath, Zhong Yang Ming continued, right now, the empress is heading to the meteor flame battlefield with Empress Luo Feng Yuan, the former emperor, the empress's mother, and her grandmother, led by Dragon Mound. They're on a mission to rescue the holy demon emperor, Luo Tao Yin. Upon mentioning Luo Tao Yin, Zhong Yang Ming couldn't hold back any longer and burst into laughter. Lord Xiao is truly remarkable. Not only did he save two fathers-in-law, but he also swore brotherhood with both of them. Ha ha ha. Xiao Tian glared at him. Did you just laugh? Zhong Yang Ming hastily tried to compose himself. Prince, I didn't. Cough, cough. Why are you coughing and furrowing your brow? I, I just felt a cold chill. Xiao Tian smirked. After all the martial training with me, you still feel a chill? When I leave, your martial training slackens, and your health declines? Grinding his teeth, Xiao Tian added. In that case, I'll personally train you later. We'll see if you're truly weak. Hearing this, Zhong Yang Ming figured he'd face intensive training regardless, so he laughed heartily, right in Xiao Tian's face. Xiao Tian's face twitched in annoyance. By the way, why didn't you mention that Empress Luo's father is out of danger? Didn't they just make an unnecessary trip? Still chuckling, Zhong Yang Ming responded, Prince, how can I dare to speak the truth if you don't say anything? Besides, with the undercurrents in the meteor flame battlefield and the continuous moves by the martial spirit army, we should reinforce our troops there anyway. Thinking of meeting both his fathers-in-law, Xiao Tian felt like crying. Both were saved by him, both became his sworn brothers, and both knew him by his supreme benevolent king of hell deity title. It was like some legendary, awkward social event. Then, Zhong Yang Ming inquired, Lord, while reinforcing the meteor flame battlefield to save the holy demon emperor, could we also train our troops to familiarize them with the combat conditions and preparation for the great catastrophe? Do you think the so-called catastrophe might be a full-scale attack by the martial spirit army? Regaining his composure, Xiao Tian lifted his chopsticks. The martial spirit army is indeed a concern, but they aren't the great catastrophe. They're just cannon fodder. Just then, Long Chiodao appeared. Lord Xiao, everything is arranged. Xiao Tian nodded in acknowledgement. Long Chiodao stepped forward, pouring wine for Xiao Tian. He informed Zhong Yang Ming, the real enemy might be the puppet master behind the martial spirit army, manipulating all the tribes. Zhong Yang Ming blinked in astonishment. Such a formidable martial spirit army is just cannon fodder. Who told you that? Have you ever heard of the ancient god tribe? Zhong Yang Ming expressed surprise. Heard of them? Without hesitation, Long Chiodao replied, of course you haven't. This tribe? Wait, you've heard of them? I've lived so long and never heard of the ancient god tribe. Where did you learn of them? Zhong Yang Ming answered truthfully, I once came across it in the southern wilderness realm. Aren't there many ruins there? I have dug up some artifacts. Also, Lord Xiao, the legacy scriptures you once obtained, weren't they from the ancient god tribe? I remember ancient structures unearthed there, older than even the Great Flame Empire. The inscriptions on them mentioned eternal blessings, and the words ancient gods. I believe those refer to the ancient god tribe. As he spoke, realization dawned on Zhong Yang Ming. You didn't encounter living members of the tribe, did you? Both men nodded, elaborating. They have golden horns on their heads with peculiar patterns. Their strength is immense, with golden hair and gold inscriptions on their skin. They are adept at various secret arts and can even absorb souls and manipulate the elements. At this, Shue Fugue exclaimed in surprise, so they're from the ancient god tribe. My son-in-law was reigning peacefully as emperor of the Great Flame Dynasty when he suddenly clashed with the chief disciple of Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion. It seems the ancient god tribe was controlling the Eastern Flame Kingdom at that time. The chief disciple of Astral Pavilion secretly infiltrated the Great Flame Dynasty for unknown reasons, only to be discovered by my son-in-law. That led to them pursuing and attempting to kill him and Shue Ruyin. After leaving the Shue family, we went straight to the Southern Wilderness Realm. We witnessed the barbarian, Jia Su, being killed by the skills of the ancient god tribe. It appears that after 
ambushing my daughter and son-in-law. They went to the barbarian territory. We're just not sure if the ancient god tribe member you encountered is the same one we know of. Hearing this, Long Chiu Dao pondered for a moment if it's the same person. Then after clashing with the former emperor in the southern wilderness realm and infiltrating the barbarians to kill Jia Su, they would have seen Lord Zhao's feats of shattering the universal rules with a single punch and using a blade to cut through the southern wilderness realm. Did they then head to the hundred flower domain? Thinking further, Long Chiu Dao informed Xiao Tian, Lord Xiao, I suspect that this Di Xinlu's trip to the hundred flower domain was just a diversion. His true aim was to follow the great flame dynasty that you had severed and taken with you. Xiao Tian smiled faintly. Things are starting to get interesting. Zhong Yangming seemed surprised. You went to the hundred flower domain? We took a detour to the hundred flower domain to resolve the issue with the flower head tribe. In the process, we discovered that the flower head tribe is actually the flower god tribe. We managed to free the flower divine ancient tree from its parasitic grip on the flower head tribe. Shue Fugue was utterly perplexed. It's really bizarre. By rights, the hundred flower domain and the southern wilderness realm are located on the fringes of the myriad worlds, remote places. How can there be so many valuable things here? There are relics of the ancient god tribe, the flower god tribe, and the flower divine ancient tree. It's truly strange. Xiao Tian proposed, considering all these ancient entities, and even the long-lived Long Chiu Dao didn't know about them, could there be a possibility that this seemingly remote place is actually the real core realm? Shue Fugue quickly dismissed the idea. That's unlikely. If this were the core realm, it wouldn't have such sparse spiritual energy and scarce resources. Moreover, the meteor flame battlefield is located here. He glanced at Long Chiu Dao. Also, the fragments of the world around the core realm should be more numerous. Long Chiu Dao nodded in agreement. Indeed, and we can't communicate with the upper realms from here. It doesn't fit the characteristics of a core realm. Listening to their conversation, Zhong Yangming felt utterly lost. Can't we interrogate the captured member of the ancient god tribe? Long Chiu Dao immediately shook his head. It's not possible. His soul is sealed. He won't give us any answers. We've already sent him to the Great Flame Breeding Grounds. We've set up formations around him so that if any of his kin come to rescue him, we can trap them. Upon hearing this, Zhong Yangming quietly asked, Once at the Great Flame Breeding Grounds, what tasks are assigned to this member of the ancient god tribe? The flower divine ancient tree needs fertilization. Long Chiu Dao made a gesture of carrying a load on a shoulder pole. He's there to learn how to fertilize. Understanding dawned on Zhong Yangming. At that moment, Xiao Tian suddenly asked, Grandfather, what did the ancestor of the Shue family want with my father-in-law? It seems unnecessary if it was just for his bloodline. Could there be other hidden schemes? Both Zhong Yangming and Long Chiu Dao were instantly alarmed, thinking, here it comes, the paranoia. Both anxiously looked at Shue Fugue, hoping he would refute Xiao Tian's suspicions. Shue Fugue sighed and patiently explained, what the ancestor of the Shue family desired wasn't simply a bloodline. He was interested in the connections behind the emperor's bloodline. By controlling our family, he hoped to have the esteemed purple emperor, once grown, use the emperor's bloodline to reclaim his old followers. Xiao Tian, still suspicious, continued, was the ancestor of the Shue family really just targeting my father-in-law? Could he have intended something for the empress or even planned to use her to get to me? The latter part was only pondered silently in his heart. Shue Fugue refuted firmly, that's impossible. When he took your father-in-law, the ancestor didn't even know about Zi Ruan's existence. At that time, I believe her bloodline hadn't even awakened. Still on guard, Xiao Tian pressed. Could there be a possibility that such a formidable figure has the ability to foresee the future? Shue Fugue remained adamant. That's out of the question. Although the ancestor was powerful, he certainly didn't possess such capabilities. Xiao Tian finally breathed a sigh of relief, feeling somewhat disappointed inside. So, they weren't really after me? That's strange. I still find it hard to believe. Pondering on how to break this thought, Zhong Yangming and Long Chiu Dao behind him burst into laughter. The old man is amazing. It's the first time I've seen anyone halt Xiao Tian's paranoid train of thought. Shue Fugue felt nostalgic. After all this time, not only has Zi Ruoyan awakened the royal bloodline of the human race, but the intensity of her bloodline even surpasses that of her father, the esteemed Purple Emperor. Zhong Yangming nodded. Perhaps the Empress will indeed restore the glory of the Imperial Court. If the ancient Emperor's spirit is watching, he must be very pleased. Upon hearing this, Shue Fugue became agitated. What nonsense are you spouting about the Emperor having a spirit? The Emperor is still alive. Hearing this revelation, both Long Chiu Dao and Zhong Yangming were struck dumb with astonishment. However, soon after, both Xiao Tian and Zhong Yangming turned their surprised gazes towards Long Chiu Dao. Why are you both looking at me like that? Long Chiu Dao asked defensively, you've been working closely with the Emperor. Don't you know whether he's alive or not? Why do you seem more surprised about the news of the Emperor being alive than we are? Long Chiu Dao waved his hands dismissively. I knew the Emperor was alive. What surprised me was that the Shue family knew about it. He then sidled up to Xiao Tian, trying to ingratiate himself, of course. Compared to being by your side, the protection from the Emperor seems insignificant. Xiao Tian gave him a disdainful look. If you knew, why didn't you mention it? You never asked. Long Chiu Dao replied, 
reply defensively. Moreover, whether the emperor is alive or dead doesn't seem to affect you much. But Xiao Tian disagreed. He is the forefather of the empress. It's significant. Maybe the emperor used his prophetic abilities. No one now would come, making everyone believe he's dead, only to catch me off guard. Seeing the determined look on Xiao Tian's face, Long Chiu Dao became panicked. Sir Xiao, I assure you, the emperor has no ulterior motives. You have to believe me. He clasped Xiao Tian's hand with a sincere expression, hoping to dissuade any misguided thoughts. After all, you're much more powerful than the emperor. Please, spare him. Disgusted, Xiao Tian pulled his hand away. All right, all right, I won't jump to conclusions. But do you know where the emperor is now? Long Chiu Dao shook his head repeatedly. Sir Xiao, I've always been in the holy dragon relic, staying out of worldly affairs. I could only sense that the emperor is still alive, but where he went. Before he could finish, Shue Fugue interrupted. The emperor is in the upper realm. Both of them expressed surprise. Shue Fugue was equally amazed. This elder from the holy dragon clan is actually close to the emperor. How astonishing. But Xiao Tian was only concerned about the emperor. So the emperor is in the upper realm? Did he go there with his 3,000 wives? Shue Fugue was speechless. Is this child's imagination always this wild? Never mind about the wives. The emperor being in the upper realm means we can directly communicate with them. Once communication is established, the emperor can issue edicts. These edicts can unify the scattered imperial forces here. Unfortunately, our communication with the upper realm is currently limited. Otherwise, we could gather all the imperial forces to resist the impending disaster in the meteor flame battlefield. Shue Fugue sighed. It's such a pity. By the way, when Empress Z left, did she entrust you to look after the Great Flame Dynasty? Yes. Is there something you wish to instruct? Can you contact the Primordial Demon Kingdom? No problem. You're aware of Empress Luo's situation. The ties between the Primordial Demon Kingdom and us are close. Having heard this, Xiao Tian informed everyone, I've combined a mysterious wealth mountain range and the Hundred Flower Domain. It's now named the Empress United Domain, or Empress Domain. Later, I plan to move the Holy Demon Realm and merge it as well. The location for the second defensive line is pretty good, and not remote. Once the three domain worlds are combined, it will be an impressive sight. Hearing this, Zhong Yangming's eyes lit up with anticipation. Combining the three domain worlds, especially at the second defensive line, wouldn't that make the Empress Domain soar? Sir Xiao, you are truly. Xiao Tian continued. By then, we will undoubtedly have access to a plethora of unique and delicious ingredients. Zhong Yangming, with your culinary skills, you'll finally have a chance to showcase your talent. Zhong Yangming's emotions exploded. While I'm thinking about the powerful defensive line and how it can assist the meteor flame battlefield, all you're thinking about is food, isn't it? Hearing that Xiao Tian was planning to move the Holy Demon Realm to the mysterious Wealth Mountain range, Zhong Yangming, who was already accustomed to such surprises, rubbed his forehead. I'll speak to the Primordial Demon Kingdom about this and make the necessary preparations for the fusion as soon as possible. Xiao Tian gave a thumbs up. I'll just push the Holy Demon Realm over there, make sure all the civilians stay in their homes and try not to come out. Zhong Yangming nodded. Don't worry, we have experience with this. I'll make sure everyone is informed. Shue Fugue was confused. What are you guys talking about? Am I too old to keep up? Wait a minute. What do you mean by merging domain worlds? Xiao Tian felt a bit awkward. Well, Grandpa, my bloodline is a bit special. I can drag entire domain worlds and fuse them together. Shue Fugue was astonished. Such talent. You need to keep this a secret. It could lead to your death. There's a race called the Psychic Clan, who can convert spiritual energy of heaven and earth into top-grade spirit stones. The Shue family and other clans have enslaved this race to produce spirit stones. Xiao Tian was infuriated. Grandpa, that's wrong. It's oppressive and extremely immoral. Shue Fugue shook his head helplessly. True, but there's nothing we can do. Escaping from the Shue family was already difficult enough. How can we bother with such trifles? Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian began calculating swiftly in his mind. If my in-laws are unhappy in the Shue family, then my empress wife will be unhappy. And if she's unhappy, my easy life is over. Suddenly, it became clear to Xiao Tian. So, the head of the Shue family is targeting me. He doesn't want me to have an easy life. Seeing Xiao Tian's expression of anger, Long Chiu Dao became anxious. Are we back to this again? Is Sir Zhao's paranoia never going to end? Zhong Yangming also realized that they couldn't continue like this. Empress Zi Ruoyan is leading troops to reinforce the meteor flame battlefield, and we need Sir Xiao here in the Holy Demon Realm. He can't just run off to the Shue family to argue morality. Both quickly intervened. Sir Xiao, let's stay calm. We still don't know the full situation with the Shue family. Why not wait and see? Exactly, Sir Xiao. You should at least give them one more chance, don't you think? Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian relented. Fine, I'll give them another chance. Once I speak to my in-laws and find out more about the Shue family, we'll revisit this. Time will reveal the truth. Shue Fugue listened proudly. Little Xiao, you really have a way with words. Oh, it's nothing, Xiao Tian said, blushing slightly. However, Zhong Yangming suddenly asked, Sir, where are we going to make a move on the Holy Demon Realm? What's going on? Because the Holy Demon Emperor, Luo Taotian, has bound the Holy Demon Realm to himself using the Earthly Sovereign Technique. The sooner you fuse the Holy 
demon realm with the Empress Domain, the sooner we can enhance the combat capabilities of the Holy Demon Emperor. And naturally, also on the Meteor Flame Battlefield, Zhong Yangming explained, All right, Xiao Tian yawned. I'll get to it once I've eaten well, had something to drink, and had a good sleep. You can start your preparations. Zhong Yangming quickly bowed. Of course, Prince, this is my duty after all. Xiao Tian then turned to Long Chiu Dao, and as for the warships, make sure they're ready. We can't possibly expect me to fly there myself when we rush to the Void Battlefield, can we? Sir Xiao, it's almost ready. Don't worry, Long Chiu Dao assured. Noticing Shue Fugui's astonished face, Xiao Tian quickly gestured, Grandpa, please eat. Don't be shy. Shue Fugui felt his head buzzing. How many more surprises does my son-in-law have that I don't know about? Grandpa, you better eat before it gets cold. All right, all right. Shue Fugui quickly agreed, then thought of something. Little Xiao, why don't you just call me old Shue? Calling me Grandpa when we've just met feels like I'm taking advantage of you. Xiao Tian looked puzzled. How is that taking advantage? Shue Fugui chuckled. If your own grandpa knew, he might get jealous. It doesn't matter. I don't even know who my biological grandfather is. Xiao Tian shrugged. Shue Fugui was momentarily stunned. How come? I was adopted. Before that, my parents had already been killed by my adoptive father. It seems they were thoroughly erased. Nothing could be found about them. I never had elders like you. Calling you grandpa is nice. At least now I have a grandfather, Xiao Tian said, smiling and showing his white teeth. How does he manage to say all this with such a calm demeanor? Shue Fugui thought. Getting up, he walked over to a jar of wine and placed it in front of Xiao Tian. This wine is excellent, the best in the Ring Mountain realm. Little Xiao, would you care to drink a few cups with your grandpa? Xiao Tian smiled. Sure, but you should know that the green flame wine is also pretty good. Shue Fugui stroked his beard. This wine is truly unparalleled. It's been difficult to find a jar like this since I've been in the Holy Demon realm. Xiao Tian looked at Shue Fugui. If you want some, just come to me. But you'll have to pay. You wouldn't want to take advantage of your junior, would you? Shue Fugui burst into laughter. Little Xiao, if there's one thing your grandpa has plenty of, it's money. On the other side, at the Meteor Flame Battlefield, facing the direction of the defense line are numerous cities where the Martial Spirit Army is stationed. In one of the core cities further back, a figure stands on the city wall, gazing into the distance, lost in thought. Suddenly, the sound of hurried footsteps can be heard. Someone rushes up to the city wall and approaches the figure. News has arrived. Bai Qing is leading an army on the way. The quality of the Void Warships is high. They'll arrive in two more days. The man on the wall is tall and robust. His skin is etched with both red and black markings. He belongs to the Blood Surge clan, an upper-level clan that possesses both the close combat capabilities of the Blood Rune clan and the curse abilities of the Blood Grudge clan. Collectively known as the Three Bloodlines, they form a solid part of the Martial Spirit Army, even capable of spearheading many plans. Seems like the intelligence network we painstakingly set up is serving its purpose, the man muses. After the explosion in the Vanguard battlefield, Holy Demon Emperor Luo Taotian returned to the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes battlefield, having elevated his power to the 20th level. He's been hiding behind the defense lines, elusive and frustrating. Zhang Keiji clenches his fists and speaks in a low voice, Sir, considering our hidden capabilities, we could actually break through their defense lines in one fell swoop. Why are we not attacking? Shua Rui, the strong warrior from the Blood Rune clan standing beside him, shakes his head. Be cautious. Have you forgotten who constructed these battlefield defense lines in that era? Zhang Keiji's face tightens. Yes, they were built by a man who was frighteningly powerful and unpredictable, the human emperor Purple Extreme Invincible. Once, in another void battlefield, the Martial Spirit Army had successfully conquered numerous cities. Just as they were expanding their victories, they discovered that the subterranean areas of the captured cities constituted an array hub. It ignited the spiritual energy of heaven and earth, causing massive upheaval and devastation. This has made us nervous, wondering if this could be a hidden mechanism left by the human emperor. Now that we have intelligence, the initiative for this battlefield lies with us. Upon hearing this, Jean Keiji instantly understands, Sir, do you already have a plan in mind? If the human emperor left any traps, it would certainly be in those defense line checkpoints. Our most secure strategy would be to lure Luo Taotian and his forces out from behind those walls, and then seize the area in one fell swoop, Shua Rui explains, gesturing slightly. Zhang Keiji frowns, Sir, tricking Luo Taotian out from behind the defenses might not be so easy anymore. Shua Rui shakes his head gently. It's not that he won't come out, it's that the temptation isn't great enough, and the situation isn't chaotic enough. Shua Rui says, his face revealing a mysterious smile. We'll first dispel a portion of our forces, pretending they are the main army, to engage with Luo Taotian in a stalemate. Once Bai Qing and their reinforcements arrive, we'll feign a retreat. By then, Luo Taotian and his troops will be encouraged, seeing an opportunity to wipe out our main force. Would they resist such a temptation and continue to defend? Once they rush out and leave their defense lines, we can attack them without any reservation. This decision excites Zhang Keiji, who's standing beside him. Grinning, he clenches his fists. Finally, a full-scale attack. These scum have been arrogant for too long. It's time to show 
them the real gap between us. I can't wait to see their faces of despair. Now, the 3rd to the 10th armies will proceed to their designated locations according to the original plan, waiting for orders. Siege equipment is also prepared for transport to the battlefield. Shuarui continues, looking out at the horizon, where a dense mass of tents forms a sprawling camp. Zhang Keiji is also emotionally charged, his eyes red and muscles swelling. For Hidden Marshal, Hidden Marshal, beyond the city defense line in their massive camp, figures of the Marshal Spirit Army are densely packed, many of them raising their arms and roaring, seemingly eager to rush to the battlefield and engage in combat. Meanwhile, on the defense line of the Meteor Flame Battlefield, Holy Demon Emperor Luo Tao Yan ascends high into the sky. His spiritual energy circulates in his eyes as he gazes into the distance. He quickly spotted the enemy's hidden camp at a glance. Luo Tao Yan lands back on top of the city wall, his expression very solemn. What's wrong? If it weren't for my mysterious surge in strength, I would have already turned and run, says Luo Tao Yan, clenching his fists involuntarily. The danger of this fight far exceeds our limits. I just hope that Bai Qing's reinforcements can arrive soon. Until then, we cannot lose the defense line. Hearing her husband's tone, Wu Xinxu grits her teeth. If we're really outmatched, why not simply fall back to the second defense line? It's been well funded over the years, after all. But Luo Tao Yan cuts her off. No, if we retreat, the entire region between the Meteor Flame Battlefield and the second defense line will be devastated. Also, don't count on those useless people at the second defense line. With that, Luo Tao Yan leans on the city wall, staring into the distance. As an emperor, I will not let them advance a single step.